Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Hello, welcome in. Welcome to Friday. It is the time to make Twinkies as well. So I'm just knocking off all the redemptions because you guys need to redeem some more. Um, today, Monday, we started with what was the redemption? Is that blue? This is blue. Blue, 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 blue. Blue. Denim's more like darker. Um, hello. What did we do on Monday? We did remakes. We remade t uh, Chicken Kiev. Wednesday stream, we remade. Um, uh, what did we do? Fish pie for redemption. And today we're doing Merrick's Twinkies. Oh, and Wednesday we also did, um, what else did we do? Fish pie and uh, Tim Tams. So today we're making Twinkies. I bought a mold. I bought a mold from Timu Silicon. So it should be fine. Uh, makes eight, probably small ones. Um, but I think they'll be perfect actually, good size. Um, so we're gonna make some sponge cake. We're gonna fill them with like a cream. I'm going to make Twinkies, better Twinkies, I hope. I think they're going to be great. Um, so there was a metal mold version of this. It was like 30 bucks compared to like this was like 12 silicon. And this is great because it folds up like that. So it's going to be fantastic. Um, we're also going to be making some pumpkin soup because winter and I have a pumpkin that exceed is keeps telling me not to keep taking out of the fridge and then not using. <laughs> um, and brownies. We're probably going to do a batch of brownies if we have time. Um, so I can do some estimations, photographing. Um, yeah, not sure. So mm. before we continue, let's go back to last time on, see what we did on the last stream. <coughs> This, there we go, refresh. Um, this is the, the fish pie that we made. Uh, it was a redemption from Nido. I wanted to use no recipe and I just wanted to kind of make it up as I go. And it was really yummy. And the fish that we used was spotted mackerel. And I, always used, uh, I also used some shrimp or prawns. Uh, we made a really simple um, base of mirepoix, so carrot, celery, onion, garlic, then we made a roux, uh, deglazed with white wine, had some dill in there, some other spices, um, blended the soup base, added that back into the, oh, we poached the chicken, sorry, we poached the fish and the prawns in the milk to then make our velouté base. Um, <coughs> it was really good. It was really yummy. Um, we used some stock and topped it off with some puff pastry. I liked it a lot. Um, it, the fish wasn't too fishy. It was just very simple, really hearty. I, I liked it a lot. And then we did the Tim Tams. So which one of those is the real one? Which one is the Molly one? Um, uh, I thought we did a good job. Exceed and I discussed, they were like, they're not really, the, the biscuits, um, weren't crisp enough, but they tasted good They're I think they're all gone. He's eaten them all. Um, I had a little bite. Yeah, they weren't, they didn't, oh, we kept them in the fridge as well, so they weren't a bit soft. Um, but big fan. $55 in tips towards the community goal. Um, we had five subs, resubs, gifted subs. Sensei resub for six years. Sensei's been around here for such a long time. Um, Enter me now, tip $15. Kayani, $39.99, not 40 bucks. And Niso resubbed and resub for six months. Phoenix, six months. Kelly for 16 months and Sensei, six years. A lot of sixes in there. Uh, so it was a lovely stream. We also did a cheeky little stream yesterday. So for those that don't know, we're going to be streaming Tuesdays and Thursdays as well in the office. Um, we're going to be doing some business bitch stuff, boss bitch stuff. Boss bitches bake better brownie. Bre bake better, better, better? Boss bitches bake better brownies. Uh, sessions will be Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I'm going to change my office around and, and make my office a little bit more organized. Um, we discussed overall kind of 
processes and, and goals for the streams and what I'm working on behind the scenes for the brownie business. Um, we set some um, some goals for the next, uh, like so, uh, the, a project for me to work on by the next Tuesday, which is packaging. Uh, I spent all day yesterday hitting my head against the wall for uh, packaging, figuring out uh, size. It, like I still am so like, what comes first, the brownie size or the box size to then, does the brownie fit the box size? Does the box fit the brownie size? Um, how do we how do we do it? Because like I want you guys to be able to buy a small amount of brownies and then a large amount of brownies and then a slab brownie. So how can we do that the most versatile way? I need a if anyone is a graphic designer or has any graphic design skills, um, that would be amazing. Um, uh, I'm we're gonna have to design a box, um, and. Um, I'm so excited. So we're going to discuss more of it on Tuesday. Um, I'm getting some quotes. Been talking to some suppliers. Um, I'm, uh, it's going to take. It's going to be a long process. I've got no idea what I'm doing. We're just stumbling my way through it. Oh God, I've got a small, small idea of what I want. But a lot of it's going to be collaboration with you guys, like market research, what you guys have seen, what you guys want, um, and because that's why why we do what we do is I wanna get my food in your hands and in your mouth and make you feel good. Um, so yeah, uh, before we continue, let's do a deep dive into Discord, show what the community has been cooking and eating. I wanna hear about what you've planned for the weekend. <coughs> Excuse me, this cough won't go away. Has it been like two weeks now? <coughs> uh, what do we got? This is Taryn. Taryn said, you, Jay just got home, be right back, no worries. Um, my friend made a birthday cake, strawberry cake with strawberry filling, strawberries on top, homemade whipped cream. Yum! Wowie. I will say that American cream is so white. So white. It like for it looks like fake cream. It's so, so brilliant white. Looks really good. Especially sets off the the red of the strawberries yeah it was delicious and we have to make strawberry cake i've never made a strawberry cake before so i think it's definitely on the list um yeah because we made strawberry shortcake last week it was nice but i would like to make like a strawberry sheet cake or something like that with like coconut i don't know like a strawberry trays leches is that exist um, <clears throat> speaking of Margot, Margot's uh, resting on the weekend, but also going to Annie's, <gasps> she's getting back into drag. Nice. Returning after 18 months off. Amazing. Please let me know how it goes. <clears throat> um, Margot, Annie cooked me bolognese tonight. Perfect meal to relax for a long couple of days. <laughs> Hold on. Can you hear me? Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I just got, just got better and I'm going downhill again. I need to stop. I just need to have a little holiday. <laughs> Kidding. Um, chill bill. Is this wine or beer? In the back, chill bill. Some garlic bread. Go Annie. This looks great. Yum. Great work. Uh, this was my breakfast yesterday and I had something similar this morning, just one piece of bread just with um, to uh, tomato, salt and pepper. This was my mum used to eat when I was a kid and uh, my mum used to make us breakfast, whatever we wanted, but then she had this and we I fallen in love with it. It's just so simple. It's just toast, butter, fresh tomato, and I like it like this, how it's like slightly under up, it's still crunchy. And then salt and pepper. It is delicious. You get the sweetness, <clears throat> sweetness of the tomato comes out and then you get salt and pepper and like buttery bread. It's really good, you should try. And then here I've just added a little bit of balsamic, uh, sorry, basil oil and some feta, but it's kind of not necessary. 
just tomato and toast is so good. Sparkling red wine, lovely. Surprisingly nice, I like that. Um, Shay, since y'all don't like... <laughs> I love this. Since y'all don't like your fruit and veggies here, here's salted, uh, salted caramel brownies with ice cream and strawberry syrup. Shay, I love it. I do like, I do like seeing your fruit with veggies uh, in your dinner, your, your fruit plate. <clears throat> this looks good though. Oh, so uh, I'll have to scroll back. <laughs> we weren't giving Shay a hard time. We were just confused because um, Shay, Shay would make it like breakfast and then she would have like savory food with, with fruit. It was, I think it's great. I think it's great. Um, who's been shading veggies? No, fruit. <laughs> it's, not, it's just different. Like, so she had brown sugar, like pork chops <clears throat> with mac and cheese and then fruit. I think it's good. It's just different. I love it. Shay, keep it up. Don't think we're hate shading. No shade. I'm a child at heart. I love it. I love it. Aren't we all? Um, I've been trying to eat more vegetables. So I said to exceed, I'm trying to eat th at least three veggies a day. Okay. Three serves of veg. Is it, is it three and two? Is that the right? Like are you meant to eat five? three vegetables and two, veg, uh, two fruit a day because I really need to increase my vegetable count. So I did it. <clears throat> I got my veggies for yesterday. So a uh, potato just cooked in the microwave because I'm lazy. I wanted it in four minutes, not 45 minutes. Um, then I had some corn. Uh, then spring onion and sour cream. Um, <clears throat> and then I had tomato for breakfast and I had something else. And I think that's all I ate, but I, I did get three veggies in. I was happy. Do you like fruit in a garden salad? I, uh, I, I don't mind strawberries in a salad and grapes can be good in a salad. Oranges, mandarins can be good in a salad. Tomato is a fruit. Shut up, hells. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <clears throat> so corn, potato, and no, I ate a carrot. No, I ate a carrot. I ate a carrot yesterday. Suck on that. I ate a carrot. I just didn't post a picture of a carrot. All fun and games. I think it's because I'm so used to having fruit and veg at school that I still do it. Still have milk with dinner too. Interesting. That's very 1950s of you. Um, I, I told you guys I'm buying this new milk and I was saying to Exceed, I just, I had a glass of milk just on its own before we, we went to bed the other day or like before we went and sat down and watched something then we went to bed. And I said to him, like this milk tastes like milk when I was a kid. Like it, it just... It's just so rich and it just tastes so nice that I'm enjoying milk again. Yeah. Um, but I've never eaten it with a meal, like a savory meal. Never had milk with a meal. Have you, is it often, like, they, they do it for kids, right, at school? You get milk with your food? Is that a common thing? I guess the good thing about it is my dentist said it's good bone density. Okay. <clears throat> she ate a carrot, everyone. I ate a carrot. Grated carrot is great on baked potato. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea for next time. When I need to get my veggie in, potato, carrot, and corn or spring onion. That's not counted as a veg. It's only like, it was only one spring onion. So I can't really count that as a vegetable. It's not really like counted as a, as a portion, is it? A serving. Um, beware, what you got here? One of my coworkers snuck me a Venezuelan empanada. Snuck you? Snuck because she didn't bring enough to share. I love that. Doesn't that make you feel special when someone doesn't bring enough of something, but they just give it to you and you feel special? I had to eat it cold because I couldn't sneak off to the microwave, um, but it was very tasty. I love the flavor of the dough particular. Does she have a recipe? Beware. 
can she teach me how to make them? Looks good. I do like empanadas a lot. <clears throat> I do like them a lot. Um, Margot, bangers and mash. Look at this. Was this last night's dinner? Yum. See what I'm talking about? People eating meat and veg. Don't really do this very much. I need to do this more. Eat more veg. Here's name and comes back. I'm going to ask her for specific smart things and say, you're, just call me your Australian friend. Would love to learn how to make her empanadas. Just a, a lowly Australian friend. Uh, carrot and celery go really well together in soups. Savory pancakes. Yeah, that's good. That's a good idea. I guess the good thing about uh, out of is my oh yeah, I just read that. How many of you guys had milk? Yeah, milk with breakfast and lunch had an option of regular strawberry or chocolate at school. So you would have double double servings of milk. Hmm. Okay. Inspired by Annie mentioning she had a craving for mash. I, I feel like <clears throat> one day if we ever do get pregnant, um, uh, if we do ever, you know, get have kids, I want to get in the habit of having like proper meals and proper dinner. I think it's, I think it's important because I want to set better, better life skills than what I had. Like, not that I didn't have bad life skills, but like my mum and like dad were like grazers. So we would have like a grazing board for dinner or like dips and cheese, like, and <clears throat> my mum would just chop up like fruit and, veg and veggies and we would just sit and we would just snack on like at the dinner table. Like we would sit outside on the balcony and just eat. Like um, we didn't often, when I was older, we didn't really have many meals like we rolls like sandwiches were really big like my parents I told you like after a big day of like working on a weekend or whatever my dad and I would go and get fresh um ham and salad ingredients to make ham and salad rolls but I want to get better at like making that um meat and three veg was yeah it was like when we were kids I remember having meat and three veg and um <clears throat> like having steak with mashed potato and like veggies and things like that. But then as we got older, my parents were busier, like with the business and things. Um, and that's why I went to boarding school. Like we, boarding school was good, but the food was too good that I put on like 10 kilos, tw like 20 pounds going to boarding school in, for three years because the food was so good. We had chefs that would pre prepare like breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it was like a buffet all day, every day. <laughs> it was so good. And then Wednesdays we had a hot chip day. So they would do hot chips at, for lunch and like meat pies and sausage rolls. And it was really good. It was really good. It looks amazing, Margo. Molly, just threw out um, all the steam uh, veggies in the steamer. So at the moment, <clears throat> the veggies that I have is um, pumpkin. I was thinking I've got a, oh, I thought I had a cauliflower. Huh? I've got a broccoli. What the heck? I thought there was a cauliflower. I swear I've bought a cauliflower. The cauliflower's, oh no, it's right in front of me. So I've got a broccoli, a cauliflower. I was thinking about doing broccoli cauliflower soup. Um, and I want to keep the veg kind of in there in more natural form. Like I don't want to like put a, like a shitload of like butter and cream and things like that. I'm trying to get better, but we're not about that today. Today we're about Twinkies. Bok choy, don't have any bok choy, but my, I got to do my grocery order. So give me all your suggestions for meat and three veg style meals. <laughs> um... We gotta open the business. We're in business, let's go. Uh, now, who here has had a Twinkie? We need, a, we need, oh God, that so, sounds good. Rissoles. I don't think I have any mints though. Rissoles are good. 
Okay, broccoli, broccolini, broccoli, bok choy. Can you put that in Discord? And just be like, Molly, put these on your shopping order. Um, ha, okay, can we get a poll, mods? I want to know who's heard of a Twinkie, who's s never heard of a Twinkie, and who's eaten a Twinkie. I didn't have a Twinkie until I was 14. Why? Just because they weren't available, or what happened there, Shay? One moment, just going to... Okay, so let's go. I tried one, it was okay. I definitely think they vary, which I don't think they should, but I've had some really bad, like stale Twinkies tasting, like stale tasting Twinkies. But I've also, the last one we got in that American snack box, that was quite good. So I don't know if, some are older than others. Some have tasted dry. Oh, the little donut things, they're gross. Um, hostess do the donut, they're really dry. But Twinkies, basically they're a sponge cake and they're filled with cream, like a whip, like a, like a frosting, fake frosting. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. We bought this mold and we're gonna be using a recipe from the site, let me just plug this in. I don't like cream filled pastries, texture issues. Okay. Still looking a bit sharpy, but it's getting better. I think I've tried one many years ago. Okay. Beware's beer right back. Do we have any other mods in stream? Rosalita? Okay. So, today's Twinkie recipe is coming in. Oh, crap. I thought I updated this. Hold on. Okay, Twinkie recipe is coming in from Zoe Bakes and I'm halving the recipe to make eight. So the recipe makes 16 and I have eight things here. So I don't think we need more than eight, do you? Um, I'm assuming that, the bat that these are also gonna be smaller than her molds maybe. So we'll see what happens, see how big they get. <laughs> All right, so you can really easily halve. I love the, the function. You've got um, like a scroll wheel rather than, you know how I use half? Sometimes it's good to have like a scroll wheel so you can, if you want eight, it'll, it'll reduce the quantities to that. Um, the only problem though that you, you need to realize is that it only halves the cups, it doesn't have the, the grams. So that's where you might get stuck, which I'm going to. So lucky I just realized that. Um, okay, so we need, okay, this is not gonna work because, eh. all right, we'll just have to wing it. So, we're going to need plain flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, eggs, oil, orange juice, orange zest, uh, vanilla extract, egg whites, and cream. Okay, so let's go in the back. I think it's cream I didn't like. Uh, it's the cream you didn't like? If it had jam, like a jam rock. We could try that. Let's try that. Hey, Lexing. How you doing? Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna take all of, mm, there's only one egg in there, so that's not gonna work. I think we need one and a half for the actual recipe and then one egg white um, for something else. Plain, 
plain flour, baking powder. So we're making a sponge cake base. Baking powder. I think I'm gonna need icing sugar anyway, so let's take that out. Jam sounds good. I think they need some more interesting flavors. Let, let's, let's hack it. Let's, let's make our own. Miss Molly Remakes Gourmet Edition. Oh, hell's bells. Maybe we do the full recipe. <laughs> They're so skinny and light. Do I have Nutella? Um, I got um, a tiny bit of Nutella, but I think I have a pistachio spread, pistachio puppy. And, oh, there was a, I must have used it all. I had a bon my mum. Damn. Oh, I can throw that out. Mm. So jam, we're going to look at blackberry. I only have blackberry. I think I have strawberry in, strawberry and rhubarb. But I think I have a plain strawberry in the fridge outside. What's this? Mermelado de Damasco. Who speaks Spanish? This is from Chile. D-A-M-A-S-C-U-S. Damascus. Damascus. I think it's a jam of something. I'm not sure. That's honey. More honey. Ooh, what's this? Uh, A-R-A-N-D-A-N-O-S. Arandonos? Arandonos. And I got Biscoff too. Brand name? No, it's a... Mermelada? Is that marmalade or is that jam? Do you know what that is, Rosalie? Look, they're expired. Oh, no, they're not. What does V mean? <laughs> Radanos is cranberries. Okay, cranberry jam. Cool. Interesting. So what is the what is the Damascus then? Other is apricot. Mm, okay. Oh, that's that smells like cranberry. That does not smell like apricot. Oh yeah. Yum. That come from um, my mum went to Colombia last year. Literally a year ago. Yeah. She, I think she left like the beginning of June. And got back like the 23rd. That's how crazy. All right. So we got eggs, flour, sugar, baking powder. We need to wash this. I also bought these. Here's one I prepared earlier. Hold on. We're waiting for a delivery as well. Um, look at this pan. Brownie tin. I think this is too big for a portion, but the idea is you can cut like some nice slabs out of that, slices out of this. I've got two. Um, and we're going to try them out maybe today, make some brownies. Exceed said they should have been deeper, but I think that'll be fine. Just come up the like we'll put enough in there. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? So they are I th think. Hmm, baking mold. I don't know the brand. But they they're really sturdy. Um they come from Timu. Just tried it out. Okay. Because so I bought these. Um <clears throat> So the Twinkie Mod Silicon. That's 
there. Adding toppings on afterwards, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, how many of you have made sponge cake before? Check that over there. Uh, right, we're gonna follow this recipe to the T, okay? So it makes 16. Do we have or not half? Three eggs. I don't think, I think we have. We have? Not have full send it. The cake I put in a Discord was a sponge. Nice. Um, okay. So we need. We're gonna need five eggs. Do twiggies need to be sweet? Yes. The sponge sponge cake. I, I've never met a sponge cake that was savoury, but you can you can get a savoury sponge. But I don't think it would taste very good. You could get like a, a medium level, because you need the sweetness in sponge to kind of allow it to help with like leavening and flavor and structure. But I don't know, could be, could be a savory version out there. Okay, so put, why is in the chat if we're going to full send it and we're going to do a full batch ends in the stream in ends in the chat if we do half a batch why is in the chat for full nose or ends in the chat for for half can't what thanks kelly why 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 no ends no one wants to do a half batch and is thinking for my health and safety. No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> why, 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 why? And then, and then, so. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Four to five. Give the extras to your neighbors. We don't talk to our neighbors. These ones, kids scream. We wave to them. I wave to them. Um, five, thanks, Kerry. You just had to, tired, no decision. Um, so we're just not gonna cook today. Molly has to choose, I hate choosing. Um, I think I'm gonna halve it because the reason is six is a, like eight is a lot, and then we can still do lots of flavors. Let's sit and read. Now you got a three quarters it? No way! And then I've got only got one pan, so then I have to like make half of the batch, bake them, and then wait because they're gonna deflate. They're not gonna be as good. So I'm gonna halve the recipe. I'm gonna do the right thing. Okay, eight it is. I've made the decision. Okay, so the recipe says, lightly grease your pan, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we need to preheat the oven. In a large bowl, whisk together the flour. We're gonna set aside, so we're gonna do a small bowl. Your dry ingredients should just go in a smaller bowl than the wet ingredients. Oh, the full batch doesn't fit in your pan. Fair enough to have that. Yeah, because I, I only have eight, and the full batch needs 16, so. I think it's better to do it. We'll just be responsible, okay? We're gonna be responsible adults and then we'll be irresponsible when we make brownies. Okay, so into here we need 110 grams divided by two, 55. Eight is plenty, right? And then we're still gonna do the cool flavors. Uh, then we need 150 grams divided by two. C. 
Go slow, especially when it's getting close. Oh, spilled a bit. Apple and cinnamon feel. Oh, do you know why I actually have? Funny that you say that. I have apple butter that I keep needing to use, but I keep forgetting it's in the cupboard, in the, the fridge. I need to use that. So maybe remind me of the flavor fillings. Apple cinnamon be one of them. Um, jam, cream, the normal. One and a half eggs, yeah. We're gonna have to one and a half an egg. I love, I don't really have too much experience with apple butter. We got given it by our beautiful friend, Nicole. And I, it tastes like, it, it's weird to have it on toast. I think it would be good. I think I probably should have it tomorrow, get it out in front of me so I can use it. Um, Cause I think that it will be Tasty on toast, and I don't want to waste. I, but I also don't want to use it because I, I don't want it to go to waste. Like I don't want it to be gone. But look at this apple butter. It tastes like for those that don't know what apple butter is. It tastes like the filling of apple pie just blended. Wait, holding. Hell's bells asked me to wait. The recipe says eggs separated. Are you following the recipe with me to make sure I do the right thing? Yes. Eggs separated. You are correct. I am. So what we'll do is we'll separate them and then we'll... Basically, it'll go anywhere jam does. I'll see if it's still good. It's like... It's like caramelized applesauce. Mm. It's yummy. But you put this on cornbread? Really? I haven't made cornbread in so long. There is a recipe in first things first for cornbread. Cornbread muffins. Mm. Yum. I wondered why it had eggs listed further down and realized some of the egg yolks. Okay, so thank you for reminding me that. Um, we need one teaspoon, so half a teaspoon of baking powder here. We're going to need them later. Um, so keep telling me about what you're doing on the weekend. I am going shopping for the new kitchen. Going to get some stock up on some like mixing bowls. Um, I'm tossing up if I buy a new set of scales. I don't like spending money that I don't need to, but I think it will be necessary. Like as Kerry was saying, you know, get a good one that does like more weight. Um, I need to get. It's it's exciting, but you know, I don't want to. I don't want to buy too much. And you know, that we can build as we grow. I mean, apple butter with rugelash. What is rugelash? So tell me about your weekend. What are you guys doing? And then we're going to add a little bit of salt into there. Are you going to kitchen to a supply store? Probably. Yeah. Because that's how I can get some nice big bowls. Um, See if I can get Exceed to come with me so we can go to Costco too. Because um, possibly inspection is next week. So we're just waiting on finalization um, of the, the council to get back to me to finalize the details. All right, so we need <clears throat> one and a half eggs separated. That sounds good. So when you're separating eggs, learn from me, Sep um, put the bowl in front of you where the white is going to go, okay? And then because the, you're handling that, you're dropping the white into the bowl in front of you and then you're going to crack, um, then you're going to drop the yolk to the side 
because if you do it like this and have them both in front of you, you can get confused and put the wrong one in the wrong one. I do that all the time. Wait, waiting again. I'm just gonna add two eggs and then take some out. You only need one white in total. I, well, I, need, I need to crack it anyway, so. Yes, in total. Okay, so we've got two egg yolks and two egg whites. So we're going to need to use half of this egg yolk and then one of the half of this egg white in total. Okay. So then, egg yolks, oil, orange juice, zest. Oh, this is different. Okay, so it's not like a. We're just whipping the egg whites with cre cream of tartar. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, I don't have orange juice, so what else could I use? Because I didn't realize. I got pineapple juice. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do pineapple flavored. Mmm. Yum. Pineapple juice. It'll be a bit more acidic than our friend orange. Clam juice is a perfect replacement. Go die in a hole with your clam juice. Ugh. That is disgusting. I'm sorry if you like clam juice. It's not a, it's not a me thing, but if it's you thing, you go for you. Um, oh, yuck. So we're gonna need 30 mils. So one and a half tablespoons of oil in here. Cause we're doing half, remember? I love clam juice in clam chowder, okay. I just think about, I don't think about the clam juice. I like clam chowder, but I don't think about the juices in the, ugh, I just like the creamy sauce and the potato. Ugh. Okay. So into here, we're gonna add I need to fill this up, but until then, Stay like that. It's not gonna be enough, is it? It's not. 20 mils. 30 mils of neutral flavored oil. Canola oil, sunflower seed oil. We could do, we should have done butter. We should have done butter, but we're too far gone. Okay. Remind me to fill that up. I'll put it there so I remember. Uh, okay, then we need same amount of sugar juice. Yum. Um, we don't have any pineapple zest, but I can get some orange zest, easy. Uh, some vanilla extract. I don't think anybody is thinking about the clean ju clam juice when eating clam chowder. All right, easy peasy, lemon, pineapple squeezy. Uh, I'm just gonna grab some dried orange zest that I have here. <clears throat> orange powder. A little bit of flea flea, flavor. Okay. Dry ingredients. Oh, and then it wants us to put the, um, the egg in the yolk there yet, but uh, hold on. That's a lot of English words not coming out correctly. It wants me to put the yolk in with the other liquids. However, because the pineapple juice is quite acidic, I want to do that at the last minute. Okay. Okay, okay. So next step, preheat the oven, done that. In a large bowl, whisk together the dry ingredients, done that. Separate bowl, egg yolks, oil, orange juice, zem, uh, zest, and vanilla, done that. Add the dry ingredients to the egg yolk mixture, not gonna do that yet. In a stand mix, uh, combine the egg whites, five total. 
Hell's Bells, it says five total, my love. So, yeah, it, it, you get three, it's saying that you need three, the recipe wants three egg separated as well as two egg whites. You know what I mean? I'm going to need another egg white. <clears throat> so in addition to the, you need five total, but we're going to halve it, so we need three and a half. Uh, Two and a half egg whites. So we got two. Do we do we risk it for the biscuit? Do we just use the two? We should probably use another one. Yes, you have the egg whites already, but you need one and a half eggs. So the recipe is saying that I need five egg, egg, egg whites in total and I have two egg whites here. So I'm going to need, I'm halving from five, so I need two and a half. So I'm going to need to crack another little bit of egg. And Romy will eat it. It's fine. Romy likes eggs. You don't need, yes, you do. So the recipe is written and it says in a stand mixer attached. So it's. No, it's saying in addition, so it's saying the recipe in addition to the egg, um, the three eggs that you've got, you want extra egg whites. So in the, in, the, um, in the directions, it says in a stand mixer fitted with a whisk attachment, combine the egg whites in brackets five total, the cream of tartar and beat on high speed. So the recipe, it is confusing. The recipe is written as though it wants three whole eggs plus two egg whites. Just grabbing some cream of tartar. Cream of tartar here. <clears throat> um, it's, it, 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 it is confusing, but it was probably similar to how I would write it. Your instructions are clearer than this. Thank you. Um, I would I would make it much more clearer that you you need extra because um, I understand it is. So you get an extra egg yolk for the puppies. Yeah, they're gonna love it. Why do I have two? No, I don't know why I got two eggs, but I only need to. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Just blob some of that out, but not all of it. There we go. And then give this to Romy. There we go. He'll wake up and he'll he'll wake, wake up to a nice surprise. <clears throat> okay. So into our bowl here, clean bowl. What we're gonna do to set ourselves up for success is get some paper towel with some vinegar, some white vinegar. And you're just going to go in like that, wet the paper towel slightly. And then we're just gonna wipe the inside of the bowl. This is, the vinegar is gonna help strengthen the protein, but it's also gonna clean off any fat remnants from the dishwasher or your fingers and just help um, set you up for success because any remnants of fat will prevent the egg white from um, increasing size and puffing up. So just looks good. Okay, so into here, add our egg whites, Bloop, two and a half. So um, getting this clear in my head, as you're having the recipe, you only need two and a half whites in total. Yes. Yep. And two egg yolks. <clears throat> yep. Never seen that school trick. Yeah, when making meringue, you don't want any, um, any presence of any fat. So... I 
I haven't taken this back yet. I just haven't got around to it. I should do it this weekend. I'll ring this weekend. Hey Google, remind me to call about the KitchenAid tomorrow. Nothing, tomorrow. Bitch, what? Oh, it says 100 grams of the sugar. I'm supposed to have a little bit of sugar left. Oh well, it's mixed in now. I'm meant to have a little bit of sugar. But I'll just do it. Just a little bit of sugar. And then we also want some cream of tartar, which is going to be a quarter of a teaspoon. Hey Google, what does cream of tartar do with egg yolk, egg whites? On the website foodnetwork.com, they say cream of tartar stabilizes the tiny bubbles in the egg whites by putting them in the bowl up like this so it increases the quantity that is getting whipped so we're going to whip this until we get what's it say to get a french meringue turn the speed down to uh so stiff peaks stiff glossy peaks i'm gonna need to add more sugar unfortunately which it's gonna throw the rest off slightly but it won't get, mm. I should have read the recipe more thoroughly. Cause it didn't say, oh, I did say divided, the sugar was divided, but I didn't read that part. If you are worried about your egg whites, you think that they haven't whipped up as effectively as possible, you can add just like a little extra pinch of baking powder and that will just give you a bit of backup. It's a little bit of a cheat, but it's sometimes what I do when I'm a bit worried. So every now and then I'm just rotating this just so I get the bits that are on the side of the bowl just incorporated. But extra sugar offset the sourness of the pineapple. This is true. Good one, Margo. That's a good point. Pretty stiff. It's beeping out the front of our house. Okay. Just rinse the beater blades because we're going to need them for the filling later. Okay. <clears throat> Little spatch. At least you can't make butter. I've been known to do that with cream. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the key to, you want really cold, to whipping cream, the key to keep whipping cream is, you want really cold butter, um, really cold creams. No, the, hold on. The key to whipping cream is that you want really cold cream. Um, and also a stabilizer, like you want like a little ta teaspoon or tablespoon of powdered sugar in there. A little bit of sweetness, but it also it gives some stability to it. <clears throat> okay. So what we're doing here is we're going to add our egg to this mixture. Okay. So 
our dry mix. Um, into our wet. Okay, so just gonna get a quarter of this here. One thing I've learned with making sponge cakes is quite often I use a whisk to incorporate. So what you wanna do is go around the middle and then just hold the whisk upright like this and everything will fall through the, the whisk and it kind of helps mix it without um, like deflating the egg white. It was a trick that I made my grandma's sponge cake multiple, multiple times I had no success because I was too rough with it. Um, and it was something that I found that worked really well was just picking it up like that and just letting it, just kind of shaking a little bit and letting it fall through the, the tines, are they called? It's like this, around the edges, and then just shake like that. And it incorporates without deflating. Works really well. There we go. Into here. Hold on to the bowl. It's hard to grip on with my small hands. So the first, like, see how I told you that I divide it into three. So I put a third of it into the bowl initially. And that's kind of like your sacrificial lamb type thing where you're, you're going to deflate that a lot more than the other two thirds. Okay. <clears throat> I put this in the background and I'm not getting any work done. I'm sorry, not sorry. Okay, so just go through around. Nice and light and airy. Through the middle, beautiful. So you can put this in a piping bag if you think which I'm going to do because I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to do it neat. <laughs> Famous last words from the Molinator. Okay. So, get your pipe. It's just hardware pipe. Like this. Fold it inside out into the pipe. Like that. And pour your mix. So I think this is, I'm glad that we halved this because this is going to make more than what we have. So I think I might make some, you know what I think I'll make? It should be able to make some sponge fingers to make tiramisu if we've got leftover. I think it should work. Tiramisu! Tiramisu! Okay. So. See if I've got a clean tray. <laughs> oh, I can use my new tray! I can use my new tray. You can make tropical ones like mango instead of coffee, yeah? I didn't need that. No, I got that. I didn't need that. Um, I knew these trays will come in handy. Nothing's coming in contact, so I'm not going to wash it. But oh, I should wash it, shouldn't I? Not 
like I said, nothing's really going to come in contact with this. It just sits in length. Or I don't think we can use this. It's not sitting flush. Wash it for no reason. I need this. Okay. Stay there, don't be. Okay, grab this. Twist. We're ready. We might not even get much. I'm going to cut. So I'm not deflating it so much. I'm going to increase the size of the hole. I feel like they're going to puff up a bit more than I expect. Okay. Uh, Are you asking why to me or oh Kerry? The Vertimixes? From when? Mine's four years old. They're probably newer ones. But they can have mine if they want. I'll give me a new one. Hello, good morning. Okay. So just gonna use my finger, just gonna smooth this over in there. So it's not completely full because they're gonna puff up even more in the oven. There we go. pineapple coming through but not much we'll see how they come out all right into the oven they go I'm gonna turn them on to bake um, rather than fan forced oven see what happens just so there's not as much circulating air so I'm gonna dry out as quick they puff up a bit more maybe <clears throat> okay that was quick and easy Done like a disco. So we're gonna figure out the filling. And so the ideas are jam. You want Biscoff? I have Biscoff. The Nutella's pretty sad looking. Um, I got a substitution for this reduced sugar strawberry jam. It's pretty trash. Uh, Nutella and there's nothing in like barely anything but I'll melt it and see what it turns out like um, we've got Biscoff it's empty I just bought a new jar of what Ugh, I thought this is a Marmite uh, Marmite, Promite but Okay, I have a feeling this has gone bad. Um, it's a vegan version of Nutella. It's gone. It's all. Mm. Nah. Oh. It's got a really bad aftertaste. I think it's old. Gluten-free, dairy-free, wow taste. I think it's wow-free now. 
Oh, it expired in 2022. But the options we have for our Twinkie flavors are blackberry jam, yummy, reduced sugar strawberry jam, okay, Biscoff, Nutella, anything else other than the cream. We're going to do that frosting. I don't have any cream cheese, but it would be good, wouldn't it? So to get this Twinkie frosting, donut jam, which is kind of strawberry jam. Strawberry jam, donut jam. By 2022. Don't tell <laughs> All right, American buttercream. So sugar, butter, vanilla, almond filling, almond extract, and whipped cream. Cool. So bring our beta bat. Rem, there's an egg for you. Go to the egg bowl. The do Rem. Look. Look. Look at this. Check that out. He walked straight past it. Okay. Good boy. You can have it, Chester, you don't even like it. Go away from it. Little shitter. All right, so we're only gonna do a small portion of this because out of the eight Twinkies, we'll probably feel like two or three with this. So I'm using, I want six tablespoons of butter, so I'm gonna use two. Two tablespoons. And then we want powdered sugar here. Vanilla extract and almond extract. Does anyone have a Twinkie on hand that can tell me if it's almondy? What the filling tastes like. I'm, I, I, I'm a big fan of almond, but I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't. I'm still craving those blondies. The, I think they might be our first flavor of the month for um, when we start selling. Uh, almond croissant blondies. Yum. I think they'll be really good. Okay, so we're going to, this butter should be a little bit warmer, but I think it should be okay. Beat this. Just butter, almond extract, and vanilla bean paste. It's me. I'm a lot of people. It's okay but I'm used to being wrong. You don't like it? Oh, hold on, it's me, I'm a lot of people. Hold on, you don't like vanilla. No, you don't like almond. <laughs> I suppose being around it a lot, um, you know, in the, uh, in the cooking industry or like, cafe industry, you've been around it a lot. I have a five liter container of almond essence. The cake decor gave me as people didn't want almond, but I love it. The less is more, it's very potent, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. But, Correct. Anti-almond flavor, bad childhood experience. Okay. I will actually, eat, I would eat actual almonds on occasion. So you're not a, an amaretto fan then, an amaretto sour fan. It's a bloody good cocktail. Okay. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. 
enhance the flavour, but also like reduces the sweetness. Oh my gosh, these look so good. Something's burning though. These look so good already. Amaretto gelato is my favourite flavour, I bet. Hell's Bells, your Italian is showing. Smelled it once, an immediate no for me, dog. All right, a little bit of this whipped cream. I drink amaretto over ice, it's so good. I love an amaretto sour. I made the mistake of introducing my brother to amaretto sours. And when he comes over, he drinks me clean. Drinks me dry. All right. Okay, that's good. It's not as vibrant white as the filling in a normal Twinkie. So let's change that. Okay. So going back to our color wheel, going back to the color decorating, if you know this, what I'm gonna do, stay quiet. But if you don't, play along. Okay. Australian butter has a yellow tinge, correct? And we want to make it more vibrant white. So, what are we going to do? Okay. So, say for instance, we want to make it more vibrant white. It's got a yellow tinge. We want to nullify this yellow. We're gonna add in a few, like a drop with this, the quantity that we're using. We're using a tiny amount of the opposite, um, uh, opposite color in the food, uh, in the color wheel to nullify the yellow. So what we're gonna do is add a little drop of purple food coloring to this to make it vibrant white. It's pretty amazing. It's like, pretty scientific but I'm gonna but in the meantime just take these out look at them those sponge drinkers look at that oh they are light they are good yeah like, like adding bluing to the laundry 100% 100% correct Okay, I'm gonna turn the fan on now. These look so good. They're gonna look, they're starting to deflate slightly, but that's okay. Oh my, I should have. <laughs> Guys, they're sticking to the baking paper, but they are so light and fluffy. Mmm. No real flavor of the pineapple, which is great. I am a bit worried that they're too fluffy. They need to be a touch more dense, but we'll figure it out. I wait till the end. Okay, so yellow, using a little touch of this, just a, when I say little, you mean it's, it means a little. Okay. Look at that. That's too much. I screwed it. Now do we add purple? <laughs> Good morning. I eat milk squad. See, that's a vibrant white. So it's m not meant to look, but. It'll be fun. It's an Easter Twinkie. Yeah, beautiful pastel. It tastes bloody good though. Yum. Uh, okay, so. I must have to increase the quantity of this. Oh, 
Whoops. Who's the smallest amount? Matches exceed, yeah. God damn it, Marty. So if I, do you think if I add yellow? Hey! Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It is 9.30. We have made Twinkie sponge cakes. We've made our frosting. We've made our frosting too uh, far the wrong way color. Gone too far the wrong way to purple. We were trying to nullify the color and um, we're making the, the frosting. For our Twinkies, and that's your 30 second recap. That's all we done. Okay. What could go wrong? Legally distinct. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's grey now, but it's okay. I think it's fine. I'll just whip some more air into it and then it will look fun. I think we found a nice medium. Happy medium. Okay. Okay. Let's try. Wait. I don't know why these are sticking. They're so fluffy. Okay, this is a test. I love how nothing phases you. That's good. That's really good. Oh yeah. Maybe a bit heavy on the almond, but I'm okay with that. Mmm. If Twinkies tasted like that. Oh. They would be god tier. Guys, let's let's not make brownie a brownie business. Let's make Twinkie business. Can you imagine? So then go my Twinkies. Do you think there's a market for it? I don't think there is. Compared to brownies. Oh, this one. You could choose your gourmet Twinkie flavor. Oh God, speaking. Okay, looks like these bad boys are done. Look at it as a compliment. You just soldier on and keep going. It's good to see. I think that makes people relax with their cooking. Oh, thank you. It's very sweet. Look at these. Those Twinkie Dinks. So we're gonna let them cool. They will deflate slightly and that's okay. Don't stress. Don't stress. They're gonna be so good. I hope. They could still deflate and turn into like nothing, but I think it should be good. They'll pull away from the edges. See how they already started to deflate? They're like shriveling. But I think they'll hold enough shape. I, I do, like I said before, I think they might be a bit too fluffy. You might need to make them a bit denser, but. They've deflated these. These are good, but they are quite fluffy. Okay, so the flavor. 
we're talking about jam. I'm gonna go through all my spoons. But instead of spoons, I'm gonna use forks. Okay. Okay. So a Biscoff Twinkie, let's try it. I think it's gonna be very sweet. I would probably cut the Biscoff with a bit of cream or something. Oh, it's good. Oh, that is yummy. It's very, like, you know, peanut butter? It's very, like, dry. Mmm. Molly ate all the Twinkies. Look how much they've deflated. These better come out clean. Those ones seem to. I don't know if they're cooked completely, guys. They seem to be. Oh my goodness, they are so fluffy. I don't think this type of cake is appropriate. We'll wait till they cool completely. I, I know that you guys give me such a hard time because I never let anything set and cool. And that is true. So I'm gonna do the right thing and I'm gonna let them cool. Lemon butter. I have passion fruit curd in here, I think. Do we use it all? Yep, passion fruit curd. I don't really like this. It tastes really eggy, but I think it would be nice. I said nothing. I knew you were thinking it. All right, passion fruit curd. There's like an actual sponge cake. Mmm, it's pretty nice. It's just a really eggy aftertaste. I would like it more zesty, but it is nice. Good option, but very, still very sweet. I think I'm gonna try the jam. How do I get this? How do I do this? It is 9.34. And I am eating sponge cake. <laughs> Peanut butter with apple jam. Okay. So this is blackberry jam. Living the dream. Mmm. That is good. Again, very sweet. I, it would be good if this was whipped cream. Because then you could do... Like the whipped cream kind of then the balances it out. You know what I mean? Like imagine lemon curd with whipped cream, like a Victoria sponge. Mm. Ooh, they work nicely together. And then Peanut butter with apple jam together? Peanut butter and apple? That's different. <clears throat> Except look at my Twinkies. Mm, are they supposed to be, are Twinkies usually rolled? Nope. Th what's the one I'm thinking of? A Swiss roll. It's, no, but it's like an American snack and it looks like it's rolled with cream in the middle. Cinnamon roll. But I know what you mean. I think I know what you mean. But that's a Twinkie like that. What's in them? 
you fill them with, like, that's what we're talking about now with the fillings. They're too light, I think. I think we did too too good of a job because they're, they're like, they're just, there's, like, nothing to them. I'm suffering from success. Um, did you see that you were able to apply it and they can do the inserts? Can they? Yeah. Did he give a price? No, he wants to know, like, the... Dimensions. Yeah, well, All right, have a, have a try that. What's this? This is a Twinkie, how it's meant to be. Like, I don't think that's how Twinkie's meant to be. That's not how it's supposed to be, but that's their feeling. We've got a missed call. I think you nailed the filling. Do mm -hmm. you like it? Uh, I think it's very much like a Twinkie. <laughs> but you don't like it. Well, I'm not a big fan of like that. What do yeah, you call okay. that? Like that. It's essentially like icing, right? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. It's. Um, by the way, did your brownies arrive? We're hoping they arrive soon. They're out for delivery. Thanks, succeed. Okay. So we just want to wait for them to cool, but this is how they turned out. They're definitely too light. Do you mean too light colour? Or do you mean too light as in like fluffy, airy? They look like breadsticks. Hey! That's what Twinkies look like, don't they? Someone give me a picture of a Twinkie. You don't think that that's, that looks right? I'm thinking that we might do, they're very Twinkie-like, thank you, thank you. Um, I feel like I wanna redo them, but do them with like a butter cake rather than a sponge cake. That one's a bit better. Twiggy's a bit taller. I had to use the, well, I have to use the tin that I bought, like, I couldn't get the exact one. So you gotta kinda like wiggle it. Yes. Like oh, that one was a good one. That came out nicely. Now that you flip those, they look great. Okay. The texture is throwing me off. That's okay. They're a little bit sticky as well. They look, do look like little breadsticks. Okay, so just to let them cool completely. Um, okay, so how many people, I wanna know, I feel like I'm asking North Americans, who's had apple butter with peanut butter? Apple butter with peanut butter. Your apple butter jeans. And then your boots with the, you have actually? Rate it? So this is apple butter on its own. Mm, it's good. I'm a huge, I'm close to a huge apple butter festival. Hold on. There's a whole festival just for apple butter. It's not something that I crave though, okay. There's a whole festival for apple butter. Not apples, not butter. Apple butter. Screw the other fruits, screw the other juices and we're doing apple and butter. There's a few up north. Oh my gosh. I like apples and peanut butter, but I prefer my apple butter and peanut butter separate. Okay. So this is crunchy peanut butter. That's apple butter. You guys blow my mind. Okay. 
Oh my God, screw the other fruits, made me laugh so hard. This is what we're going for, some peanut butter, apple butter action. Hold on, see if we can get this to focus. Hello? There we go. Apple butter, peanut butter action. Just taste that sweet peanut butter. You can't. All right, I feel like I need it in a bit more larger quantity to fully ascertain how I feel. I don't know which, which fork or which knife or spoon I'm using for which thing. Oh, which did it? No one in there. Okay. Try this again. Ooh. The spices? That's, that works. The spices in the apple butter, the cinnamon, the sweetness goes really well with the peanut butter. He's like trying to climb up my leg. Mmm. Warm spices with peanuts are a natural combo. It, it makes sense. Apple butter is such a big deal that the festival Amnia sees almost 100,000 people in a single weekend. Oh my God. Here's something that I'd never heard of until I started streaming in the last like five or six years. Apple butter. And now you're telling me that 100,000 people go to this festival in a weekend? Wow. When is it? I haven't gotten decent apple butter since I moved to Texas. I need to head north and get some. This, you, you can order this online if you're in the US. I can't get it shipped to Australia though, this company. It's in California quite good they close every day uh, they open every day except christmas and july 4th something there's like two days that they yeah order more 24 7 bowlvista.com hello chester it's a hundred year old farm we have a big oh, i want to do blackberries you guys have so many amazing berries I'd love some blackberry jam, huckleberry jam. I'd like to be able to cook with all the blackberries. But like in Australia, they're so expensive. The cheapest blueberries come down to is a small punnet is in the peak of summer is like $2.50. And that's only a small punnet. Um, raspberries are minimum. The lowest they get, I think is $4 a punnet. Um, so I use a lot of frozen I, um, raspberries and sometimes blueberries. Blackberries are really hard to get as well. No way. Anthony says I have six wild blackberry patches on my property. Roll your eyes at Antimina. What do you think? You, I'm not giving you any more. You have leukemia. You can't have sugar. You're not meant to have sugar at all. Um, you spread them with Roundup, hack them and curse them. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. One of those things that as, as a foreigner or as, you know, someone that doesn't have them, you think the grass is greener. It's like people with, like, people like the idea of kangaroos and um, they're so pretty and they're so cute, but they're actually a huge pest in, um, like, farmland. Um there's heaps of like different things like rabbits, you know, or, or like we love the idea of snow, right? As an Australian, I love the idea of snow and you guys have it snow falling, whatever. But I know you guys tell me all the time about how you curse snow when you need to. It's cold. You slip over it and then you need to plow it. 
Don't be jealous. You guys get all the venomous bugs. Yes. But that being said, I am 32 years old. Um, have never been to hospital from getting bitten by a spider. Never really see spiders unless you go into the garage. And I'm like 100 times bigger than them. I squish them. Don't be scared. Australia is, I've survived for 32 years, you can do. I miss blackberries. I should see they'll grow outside of my back. Yeah, do it. Oh, hi. Are you hungry? So this is, this is what he does. So I'm talking to you guys. Imagine me turning and he just watches like this and then he just... He just loves being on his back paws. What? 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 Oh, Chewy. What have I got in here? Have I got a treat? No. Where's my treat container? Uh, we don't have cranberries. Nope. All the cranberries come from the USA, I'm pretty sure. You guys export them to us. I don't know where your treats are, Chess. Here they are. <gasps> Big cranberry bog. I never knew, it still is wild to me, that they flood the cranberry like bog they flood the the field so that the cranberries like float is that what is that right i think i watched a video on it and that's how they like yep super hazardous job how come where's the ha like because the drowning or like do people get in there with the water in the water I thought they used like machinery and stuff. And we're back to spiders. <laughs> uh, okay. So, chess, we're doing cooking stream stuff, okay? You can't be involved. Okay. Can't be afraid of spiders. Oh, there's spiders with the cranberries. Oh, gross. Oh, God. Oh, poor spiders, though. They just live in their happy life, eating the insects on the cranberries, and bang, you get waterboarded. Imagine just growing up, and then, no, like, you're just going to be waterboarded, like, and you're just going to be drowned. But those are main spiders. They're very polite. People are very polite in mine. And so they, you're telling me that they raise very polite spiders too. Okay. Okay. So, frosting. We're going to get a kniffy. A vodka. In Portuguese. All right, turn these upside down. And we're going to make some little holes here. Three little holes, like three blind mice. We're gonna go there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I give you the Molly Twinkie. Rah, round of applause. Oh my god. Ready? Imagine it would be white, okay? Imagine it's white. Look at that. It's the inside of our Twinkie. Yes. Mmm. It was really good. I love it. Yum. No bad for a first attempt. I agree. So sweet. 
Oh, so sweet. Oh. Ugh. Wow. Okay. So the next flavor we're going to do, I'm going to try something different to see if I can make this work. I have this. Excuse me, making a lot of noise. Can you pipe it in? All right. So I'm thinking if we create like a tunnel. Oh. I just put cake in here, did I? Uh, now we need to, hmm, get a piping bag, get a proper piping bag and see if we can make this work. They're just, I think they're just too small. <clears throat> Delicious. Delicious. What happened? Hold on. Four months, mouse. Thank you for the resub. Holy dooly. Hey, Bean. Hey, Bean. I lost my streak from. S oh, no. All good. Thank you for being here. We are making Twinkies. Hey, Bean Mouse, what's been happening? Busy with the kids? How old are they now? Good. Turns one, Tatiana and Nathaniel. Nice. All right, which is the one that I put the hole in? This one. Ready? I think we did it, guys. Oh my gosh, I think we did it. Yeah. Check that out. All right, we'll do one more. You don't want to put too much in there. Oh, we've got to blow out. That didn't happen. Oh my God, now it's ripped. You don't want to put too much cream because like the cakes are light and fluffy. You only want it to be light. Look at this. Look at that. Hold on. It is more in the middle if you go there. Mm. Yep. Um, kids definitely keep you on your toes. I have an 11 year old and a six. Wow. How did, how did the ages, you, you're in two different life cycles like you got like a preteen and a bub how how's that going ara is that how i say t2 the ara the ara how do i say your name um okay 
The issue is, is that, okay, let's, you're gonna have to empty this and then add the jam and everything else. Um, so one of my school friends is uh, due to give birth in September. And we're trying to think of, my other friends are trying to think of a gift. What do you think is a good group gift that we could give? Okay. So let's go in with jam. I think we're gonna go jam. Years worth of diapers, yeah. Do you know what, do you want a fun fact? For North Americans, we call diapers nappies in Australia. N-A-P-P-I-E-S. Huggies make nappies. I don't know where the name come. Hey, Google, why, where did the name nappies come from? Why is it different to diapers? On the website sannyhot.com, they say, in British English, the word nappy originally came from a nap of cloth. However, in American English, the term diaper is used. The word diaper was originally the term for a small pattern of repeated geometric shapes. Later, it was used to describe white cotton or linen cloth with this pattern. Very cool. See, the more you know. The Americans just really didn't want to use British words. <laughs> So as you pull back, as you pipe, look at that. It's jam. We'll do two jam. Sticky fingers. Oh no! Damn it. All right. I think why we quit while we're ahead. I think for our first attempt, I think we did a good job. Do you think we should try again? Do you think we should do another version? Or should we move on to lunch? Lunch. Some savory food. Good. I think we did a good job. They're not excellent. They're not amazing. But I think they're pretty banging. Like, that's jam. I break that in half. It's my jam Twinkie. Next time, mollify it more. Now time for lunch. Okay. There, and then this cut stuff can all go in, in the back. What is a tiger tail? I've never heard of a tiger tail. So I live in the US and yeah, I was watching the Canadian house flipper and asked to see his metric tape measure. Homie said they don't use metric up there for construction. Pardon? They don't use metric there for construction. So we use mills. Canada is a mix of imperial metric. Same with the UK as well. So the, like the UK, they use a mixture of both at different times. Like they'll say, they talk about measurement in yards and miles. It's, it's very...
It's very weird. But like in Australia, we use feet. Like as if you talk about height, you talk about like, oh, he's six foot or I'm five foot five or whatever. Because it, it, it's easier when, I think from when we were kids talking about babies and how like, how many pounds a baby was. Now they talk in, it's very odd because I use grams all the time, but you tell me a baby is like two and a half kilo or like five kilos. I have no idea what that is, if that's good or bad or big or whatever. But tell me a baby is six pounds or 10 pounds or 12 pounds. I'm like, holy shit, that's a big baby. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's all relative to certain, you know, certain things make sense. I've got good at, uh, <clears throat> I've got re pretty good at like um, converting things in my head, like pounds to kilograms and things because from stream. Um, but if you told me a baby weight in kilograms, I would have no idea what's like, if that was a big baby or a little baby. <laughs> um, Tiger Tail is a Twinkie with raspberry topping and coconut cream filling. Oh, that sounds good. And this is made by Hostess as well. Mm, the more you know. That's one in the fridge. <laughs> no. So Fahrenheit doesn't make sense. Celsius just, just makes sense. Zero is freezing, 100 degrees is like is boiling point. It just, it just makes sense. Fahrenheit is crazy. Don't even. Don't even. And like you have fluid ounces and weight ounces. It makes sense for water. Yeah. Um, my two were small babies and now Nathaniel is tall. He's 101 centimetres. Damn! It's just over three feet for those that three and a bit feet. Two bias as an American water. I agree. Everything else I disagree. But like... I understand you, you grew up with, it's what you know, right? And that's what I'm like arguing for Celsius because it's what I know. But I think it's just crazy that we all have, we just need to universal, we, yeah, you guys need to jump on board with us. <laughs> jump on our bandwagon. Uh, okay, so for lunch, do we want cauliflower, cheesy cauliflower broccoli soup or pumpkin soup? What do you think we should do? Pumpkin? Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. I'm alone. I love your pumpkin soup, but cheesy cauliflower so I can live vicariously. It was so cold. You were chilly? Exceed, not last night, the night before. He slept with his electric blanket on level three. And this man is an overheater. Like, that, for him to be that cold is, is unfathomable to me. He was the one that when we got the electric blanket, he complained that it was like my, me turning my side on was making him hot and he hated it. And now he asks to put it on and he puts it on for me on my side um, before I go to bed. <laughs> I always forget your seasons are swapped. Yes. Oh, bacon. Okay. So Hells Bells wants 
Pumpkin soup is nice. Beware said pumpkin soup. Uh, likes pumpkin soup, but cauliflower. Cheesy cauliflower. Um, what other options could we make? See if there's any leftovers in the fridge that I need to use. What about chorizo? I've got chorizo here. We could do chorizo and cauliflower. What do you th that would be good. Chorizo and cauliflower soup. I feel like that would be yum. Chorizo. Cauliflower. I've got mushrooms as well. <laughs> mushrooms. Do you want a real pole? Nah. But what do you... What do you think? Never done it before, so let's do it. Let's do it, do it, do it. Okay. I think I've lost the lid for the black, so the red is used interchangeably between pots. Oh, that's a bit... I don't want to show you the inside of that pot. It's a bit grubby. It needs to... I baked bread in it, and it... It's clean, but it just looks pretty bad. That's you said, saucepan. Okay. So, chorizo with cauliflower, I think would go nicely. Let's get some red onion. We do like a Spanish, Molly Spanish seasoning. I, I've washed all my knives and things. I just haven't bought them. <clears throat> They're just sitting here. Just hanging out in the pantry. It's not really. Okay, so red onion. I think I'm going to use a quarter of it, so this is half. So I'm going to quarter. And how many of you like soup? I'm trying to become one of those people that just eats like soup, not with like bread. And I still probably will eat this with a little bit of bread, but like I never used to think of bread being a full meal, but I think it's in, your how, in how you make it. Um, in how you prepare it, making it a bit heartier with um, with love. <laughs> I don't know, like I, I do like it with pasta or noodles. Thicker, I think definitely needs to be thicker. How do you feel? There we go. All right, onion's gonna go to the side, but the chorizo is going to be cooked slowly. Chat two seconds. Just washing this excess salt off. Soup is great when you're struggling, when you're feeling a little bit unwell. Yeah, I would agree with that. All right, so I'm just gonna my chopping board's running away from me. It's good practice to do this. 
or financially struggling, but the, yeah, 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 I agree. I understand. Um, I don't know in, in all truth, I know what you mean, but I don't know if I agree with, depending on what soup, like homemade fresh, like the veggies can be quite expensive. You, um, you can get some cheaper, like, you know, even tin soup is cheap. But making things from scratch these days is way more expensive than pre-prepared stuff. You know, to the cost of vegetables and... Pasta's always been a really good stable staple when you need to save money. You know, I was looking at pasta today. I was doing my grocery order. Like a dollar for a packet of pasta and just serve it with some, you know, just cook it with water and salt. It's a really good way to bulk things up. So we're going to start to cook some of this chorizo down. And the oils in there are going to kind of render down. Have you guys noticed how much your grocery bill has increased? You know, over the last four years? We used to spend uh, about... 100 and well, we used to try to spend a hundred dollars when we first started streaming seven years ago. Our grocery bill was like a hundred dollars for two people, and now it's closer to like a hundred and seventy, hundred sixty, hundred and seventy, depending on what we're making. Um, yeah, it was keep it like around a hundred, and then it was keep it under 150, and now it's keep it under 200 dollars. And that's not included the dog's food. The dogs eat quite well. Um, we buy their food separately. But the, like the, the grocery order that I, I buy groceries from Woolworths every week, but then that's not included in the, like, the $300, $400 that we spend at Costco maybe once a month and a half. You know, stocking up on stuff like QP and beef, things like that. Do I smell dessert? Insert Twinkies. These are our Twinkies. This is how they turned out. They're pretty good. They're just a little bit too fluffy. Honestly, I was worried, but they ended up, turned, they ended up turning too fluffy. This is when we fill with jam. Look at that chorizo. Mm. Yum. So we're making cauliflower and chorizo soup. I buy most of my groceries from a chef store or a restaurant supply store. Have to buy in bulk though, yeah? And there isn't one, like there used to be a market near where we used to live, um, like a, a chef market, chef store. Um, they open during the week to business owners and on the weekends they open to the public. We stream from there once. Um, and they can be good. But yeah, you, uh, buying in bulk is the cheapest way to do it. But if you don't have a way of storing it or you're not going to, like for fruit and veggies, if you're not going to cook it up, um, it can be a waste of money. Um, it's, it can be really hard if you're living one to two people when buying in bulk. Okay. So we're going to add some onion. Vacuum sealer and deep freezer, yep. And like cooking up your veggies, making, you know, um, soups or, 
making a big braise and then freezing those into portions. Doing like a big cook up weekend is really great. Okay, so I'm not gonna use all of this. I have a hungry dog. Just one, I can't see the other one. And then we want our cauliflower. So what you want to do is I've already taken done some of this as well when I took off the leaves, but you want to get in, get into your cauliflower like this. So using a knife, if you want to use a smaller knife if you're a bit worried about your knife skills for the, you just want to use care and control, but basically just taking the inside out like that. And then I just trim, because I use that part. Fabulous. Okay. So we just wanna, usually if I was making these into florets, the trick is to cut down three quarters of the way, and then turn your knife to break it into pieces without disrupting the kind of the shape of these florets or like little trees. So you cut down and then you turn your knife to break them away. But with this, everything's going into the soup so it doesn't really matter. The reason I don't cut it completely is that you get these little florets, like these little broken bits. But as I said, it's all going into the soup. Doesn't matter what size it is, as long as it's even. Even cooking. Like that. These firmer bits on the stalk, they get cut smaller because they'll take longer to cook. They're firmer. Right over here. Treats on onion. I'm going to take just a little bit out for the end for serving. There we go. My trick is to make stock in advance and then freeze one litre portions. That's good. I, I, if you have the, the storage space, it's a really good trick. I don't like making stock. So I don't do it. If I'm making something specific like ramen or um, uh, what, something I want a fancy stock for, I, I do it. But or if I have like veggies to cook up, I'll, I'll make stock. But for me, the amount of space, like I'm struggling with freezer space as it is, let alone making stock and then portioning it. And I just use stock powder, like a good quality stock powder for everyday cooking. Okay, turn the heat off just at the moment. I don't think I've got enough, a big enough pot, guys. Speaking of jam, I was looking for a jalapeno raspberry jam yesterday for sourdough grilled cheese, but the stores don't have any. Do you think, so? I am making um, chili jam on Monday. It would be super easy to make for yourself, yeah. I am making chili jam on Monday. If you come back, um, we can try some uh, a variation, doing a raspberry chili jam. If you're doing it for every day, like for your personal cooking, um, it's <laughs> there's a lot of things that you can skip, like worrying about proper gelatinization. You know, making a smaller portion just for yourself, keeping in the fridge, airtight container, and using it like you don't need to make an actual jam um, and worry about 
like the shelf life of it if you if you're just doing it for yourself. Like you could make yeah, I'll explain it on I'll explain it on Monday what I mean. Okay. Oh, cauliflower on the floor. Coulda, woulda, shoulda used a bigger pot. But it will be fine. Annie! Delicious. Annie, thank you for the resub. I'm very excited for your weekend. I heard first show this weekend. You pumped? You ready? Okay. Filling this with water. My, why add jalapenos to a grilled cheese? Ooh, that would be good. Jalapenos go really well with grilled cheese. And sweetness of the raspberry would be yum. Which dish is this for? We are doing soup. Chorizo and cauliflower soup for lunch. Does a soup count as two serves of veg? If it's just, I need your opinion. If I'm trying to eat more veg and I want to get three serves of veg, does soup count as two? Annie, you're not purple anymore. This is going to take me a while to get used to. <laughs> Margot, you're going to sit Annie down and you're going to tell Annie the rules of this stream in relation to the, there's an unwritten rule of this stream. Your Discord name needs to match your Twitch name. It's not a rule. It's more of a like make Molly happy thing. The... the, the uh, your Twitch name, please make it the same name as your Discord name. And the other thing is don't change your name colour. Because, <laughs> like, Martin Green is green. Margot is blue. Beware, Roselli, Kate are all purple. Um, Kat is green. Antamina's red. Certain, you know, just I vibe with certain. I just... I haven't changed my name in five years. I'm co you don't have to. No, you're, you're purple, it, pink is, is close enough to purple. It's okay. I did check and change my color forever ago, but to be fair, I didn't know before that I had a choice. I always be purple. Okay. I'll always be purple when I have a choice. I think I'm pink. You are pink. Color babs. Okay, uh, Roselli's always team purple. She's got purple house, purple kitchen aid. If your kitchen aid is... Uh, once, once you have a KitchenAid, you have to make your, your name colour the same as your colour as your KitchenAid. <laughs> Mine's red. Mm. Okay. What? What's going on here? There we go. This whole time, it wasn't fully ignited. My drag aesthetic is very purple, but I'm out of my drag aesthetic. It's all rose and baby pink at the moment. Okay. But you're back in your drag aesthetic this weekend. Right? Okay. I don't know what to do now. I was going to make brownies, but... I want to wait to the other brownies. I don't... My look this weekend is all black. Very chic. I like it. Um, what else can we do? Full emo goth. Okay. I need to get a lid. That's not the right lid, but that will do. Okay.
All right. So I got a question for you guys. Do you like Okay, imagine this is red, but do you like this style packaging? So like you have the brownies like individually pieced in the box. So say for instance, if the, the box will be smaller, but if you have three, there'll be three evenly spaced in the middle. If you get six, there'll be six in the box. And then if you order a slab, the, the slab will take up like the whole, the whole bit. What do you think? Thoughts, feelings. Yeah, so that's what Exceed's idea was like. He, he thought that the idea that, let me show you. Um, he thought that like um, they would be too hard to grab out of the box and be awkward. Like these aren't cut, they aren't cut like that. You would cut them yourselves, that, so, but that could be a style. So, but the only issue with there is what we could do um, is do just one big, like, so the photo that I showed you before, I'll have to write this out. Okay. So do you like them pre-cut or do you like them not cut? Um, so ideas are blur. Okay. Imagine this is my box. So imagine the, uh, the ideas that I have is available is you'll have, this is the inside of the box. You have an order for three brownies. You can order six brownies, or you can order a slab, which is a full one like that. So that's, that is the idea that we have. So we can use the same box for all three sizes that are available. So I don't have to buy heaps of packaging. It's possible to a box maker to confold one of the flaps from the holes into the tab so they can be lifted up. Yeah, I do a decent amount of packaging. Luminology, are you in Australia? Yeah, so this is the same box with three different inserts. Or we could do, so they're individual bits, right? Or we do like this, So this is a slab that then you can cut, like that is a portion, so a brownie that is that big that you can cut at home and it be three brownies. And then this is a brownie that you can cut into six. But they're, they're, um, they're, they're not pre-cut. Does that make sense? So... These means we only have to do two, two inserts and that one. But what would you like, because that's what it would look like. Imagine that in an inside a box where you would just cut it yourself versus that where you can like the, the ours, our brownies would be bigger and you would have less of them in, in, in the box. So you would have options for three, six, or a full slab, which is like nine. What do you think? So that, where you're individually packaged, 
No, but we'll, okay, this is option. This is option one, and this is option two. Does that look at that? Doesn't look at two at all. Okay. Two. I like the presentation of the individuals like that. We have option one and option five. Shut up. <laughs> option one and option two. You like option one. I just think it looks nicer. That, like the presentation is very like a bit more luxury. You know how you have like a chocolate box. The six pack, the last pick you showed. You like that? Okay, and the other idea is we we'll, if you'd like to do more of this, we'll be we'll be chatting in on stream Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Monday night and Wednesday nights. We do we started yesterday, we'll be streaming in my office. We'll be going through all of this stuff. So we are in the process of creating a brownie or like brown I, I don't know what to call it, a brother than a brownie business. We're we're creating a retail store. Um, so we're going to start to make brownies on stream, not in this kitchen. Um, we have a, uh, an approved commercial kitchen or domestic commercial kitchen. Um, we're going to be making brownies to order, to sell online. So you can have brownies in your hot little hands. We're going to begin starting with domestic shipping. See how we go. I might trial some international shipping. Probably one of each, the slab and the six pack, mostly the six though, since you have a variety of people, people like variety. So my idea would be three, six and a slab. Because then if you want three is, if, you know, for the price point, a lower price point, people might want to try three brownies. People might want to try all six flavors. And then a slab is like one big flavor and you can get it decorized, decorated. We're looking at options for, um, personalization of like getting photo printing or like you can get um you know say for instance father's day you can get a picture of your dad like on a brownie or you can get it written like happy father's day or like um good job bro or um something naughty will the packaging company provide you samples for testing yes the brownies you ordered are coming from New Zealand to Perth. So no, no, they're not. They're they're coming from Melbourne. The the company that we looked at from New Zealand, they don't ship internationally. They just ship within New Zealand. Um, <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. For the same reason that like the perishable items. Yeah, I like to receive nice tits on a brownie. Also, hello. We have to talk to Mr. B. He'll organise it for your birthday, for your 40th. Uh, happy 40th and um, pumpkin tits. I think that would look good on a brownie. I, I don't have any lines. That many lines, though. Or just pumpkin tits birthday. 40th pumpkin tits. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the idea. So far, I'm just going to get costing... Um, I was working all day yesterday with international suppliers, um, from various countries and they're a little bit hard to deal with when you only want first trial run of a hundred boxes. Cause I know that, you know, the factories work with huge quantities. So we're going to have to pay more for a small run and then hopefully we can do a big order after that. But it gives me an opportunity to see what's like get a hundred, the smaller ish amount. It is a big amount at the same at the same time. The hundred is a lot. Um, is that like Cinderella's carriage? Or <laughs> also like to receive nice tits on a brownie. Maybe don't use a packaging company to start off with. So we're we're using a local. Uh, I'm looking at working with a local company, and then we will look at. A lot, um, like a larger factory when we need bigger quantities. Um, 
They were. That is a digital flatbed. Um, so we, we've, I've gone through this process working with suppliers like this, international suppliers, um, for all of our other merch. A lot of our other merch, not all of them, some of it is Australian. Um, and when we're doing quantities, like the silicon mats we bought thousands of, so it was a bit different. Um, but it is a bit tricky because they want to make it feasible for them. They want you to buy thousands. You see the message in Discord where I was like, I want 100. And they're like, that won't work. What about 10,000? I'm like, nah, bro. No. So I'm just pushing this cauliflower down. They can make prototypes for you very easily. Okay, digital flatbeds. All right, I'll have a look. Um, I think this company that Nito got me onto um, was good. And it will be more expensive. And we're just going to have to, like, it'll just be cut into our, our you know, the, the cost of the brownies. But my focus is I want to do, we want to start promoting and sending them to you guys. We want, the social media is huge. So the cost of, like, putting a sub pub packaging out there to people taking photos of it like that's the first impression people are gonna have of the business. And so we wanna make an impact. Um, it won't be everything we want, like we won't want, we can't, you know, we're trying to get a nice box. We won't do like personalized wrapping paper and things like that. We're trying to cost, cut costs when we can. But this day and age with social media, you know, and online marketing, you wanna, the product is, as important as the packaging. Um, the packaging is huge. So uh, I want it to be really nice. Something that you guys it will be quality. Um, I'm, I'm excited. But the trick is to find the companies that are using their digital flatbeds for other things, like sign shops, for example. Bigger shops will have the equipment to do short runs. Okay. I think. This company does signs. That makes sense. Okay. Ooh. So this is our soup, our cauliflower soup. I'm gonna take the lid off now that everything's kind of submerged with basically cooking the cauliflower. The issue is, is that now the chorizo is cooked, it's starting to taste like, like a ham hock or bacon, which I don't like less than, taste less like chorizo. So we're gonna add some more spices in there. Um, add some salt. I don't wanna to add too much salt because when we blend the, the chorizo, we'll add some salt as well. And the chorizo is at the bottom of the pot compared to the cauliflower sitting on top of it. It's not, it's a bit hard to mix in because I'm using a small pot. Typical molly. Um, we're gonna add in some cheese. Where are these brownies? This delivery is supposed to be arriving. Hope the end, uh, soup ends up tasty. Time flies. No worries. See you everywhere. Have a great night. Cauliflower soup is the best. This is cauliflower and chorizo. So if you go like this, somewhere there's chorizo chunks. stock powder, two of them. Oh my God. Um, so I'm a little bit unsure of like what to do next, the chicken or the egg situation. Uh, if I, I don't know if I should keep, like, is, is this something that interests you guys or should we keep it for Tuesdays and Thursdays? Because I'm thinking about what flavor flavors we do. So, <clears throat> 
I don't keep it to Jesus. Okay. So he says I talk about all the time. Don't have to keep it to Jesus. Move, Move forward as fast as we can. So, where are my brownies? Guys, we need six starter flavors. Okay? And when we're, what we're doing here is we're going for versatility. So, we need a traditional brownie. So I can change quickly in the future. Why? Because it's easier that way. What do you need to change for though? Are you serious? <laughs> he just walked up to me in the past the kitchen and goes, look at this. He pulled his pants down. He goes, I'm double pantsing. He goes, so I can change when I get too hot, I can just rip his pants off and then when it gets cold he can put his long pants back on. Crazy man. Okay. So what other types of items? Just brownies. That's the focus, is we're just doing brownies. I don't want to overcomplicate it. I want to be known for really good brownies. It's the Miss Molly Brownie Bar, baby. Boss bitches bake better brownies. So, I have, may have an awesome suggestion for me. Hit me. Hit me. No, hit me. Luminology. Brownies and blondies. So, like, uh, non-cooker version. So, I want to do... Five flavors with a six flavor. Six flavor being a flavor of the month. So the first flavor of the month is up for grabs. I'm thinking it sh could be um, um, the options are. Almond croissant blondie. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do burnt butter blondie as a base. We should write this down. Um, in very much case, the bottles with bottles, jar tins, etc. Some of it may have boxes too. Look for surplus packaging companies. Okay. Surplus packaging. All right. Um, okay, let's get another piece of paper. Every company uses packaging has overrun discontinued. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then there's no chance of um, customization though. Right? Okay, so traditional, like your regular brownie. Um, then you've got a blondie which would be brown butter blondie. So you've got a plain chocolate, a plain white chocolate blondie. Then the options we've got, okay, is, and we, we can pull from this, is caramel, Biscoff, um, caramel chocolate, uh, caramel coconut, which is, um, the s'mores, uh, not s'mores, Girl Scout cookie. Triple chocolate. The, um, the, the traditional blondie, a brownie has milk chocolate and dark chocolate. Um, so I wanna do some really like polar, um, like very different. Rocky Road. I, I, the thing is, is I wanna be different to other people. There's a, like a s'mores version Rocky Road, but we'll try it. I want to write it all down, uh, and then I'll tell you what I think. Rocky Road, um, Honey Honey Joy is my favourite, um, and that's easy. That's easy to make because you just put the toppings on top rather than mix-ins. Mint slice. Um, I'll tell you more suggestions. I have Mexican hot chocolate, which is like a. Um, Tim Tam Slam, just Tim Tams on top. Candied bacon. I, I, I am unsure of the health. I don't know if I can do candied bacon because it's going in the mail and it's, it's. It, it, I worry like I have to cook the shit out of it. You know what I mean? I just, I just don't want anyone to like keep it out on the bench for three days, like 
three plus over three days and then get sick from it. Not, you know what I mean? Oh, that tastes so good. Oh my goodness. This is just chorizo, cauliflower, salt and chicken stock powder. Oh my God, that is incredible. I love that a lot. Okay. But let me find out, maybe we can candied bacon. We would have to, with uh, walnut, yep. Do you think peanut butter on it? People like Nutella. I like the idea of mint slice. We could buy mint slice or we can make our own topping. I don't know how much like the saving would be to make like a mint chocolate fudge. Explain chocolate fudge to me on a brownie. Nutella, yep. Because the brownies themselves are fudgy. Peanut butter. <clears throat> Maybe those have a nut version. I want to do a gluten free. That was what I was going to test today. I, I might do chocolate and coffee. So coffee is um, is this one here. Let's. Cream cheese or cheesecake? This will do. Doesn't need to be this, but. Okay. So Mexican hot chocolate would be like cinnamon, like a little bit of chili. I would like that. Okay, so caramel is this guy. Why does the lighting never work? And uh, then nothing is ever going to be vegan um, because I, I, uh, well, I will do gluten-free, not celiac. Um, like I can't promise, you know, I'll try to take gloves off, you know, make the nut-free or gluten-free versions first, of the, like first for the day. But I, I don't want to do vegan because I don't want to do, have to worry about eggs you know, not using eggs and the the main purpose of my brand, like the main part of my brownies is whipping eggs, egg yolks to their like light and fluffy and that gives them the kind of like fudgy texture. It would be a whole different recipe. Okay, so this is some of the lineup that you've got. This here is coconut caramel with chocolate. Yeah, vegans make that, sorry. Yeah. Um, thank you, Luminology. So this is like a Girl Scout cookie. Um, an, another variation for this is German, um, a German chocolate. So like, a, um, with like nuts and caramel, but I think this will be quite nice. Um, uh, so caramel coconut, okay. Iced coffee. So this is a coffee frosting with chocolate on top and uh, it's quite coffee heavy. Uh, this is caramel. So there's two different variations of caramel. So this is mixed in caramel chunks. Like that, there's caramel inside there. And then there's just caramel on top. What do you think you prefer? I think I like this better. Then you have Biscoff, which is Biscoff cookies. And I'll have Biscoff um, sauce in there as well. And then that's walnut. 
Um, and the traditional version, it's only very small, but that is the traditional brownie. What do we think? And then on top of that, then we have a blondie, uh, a brown butter blondie. Then you have, um, I don't know if to do brown butter blondie or regular blondie. So I'm going to have to figure out. Um, I really like the idea of, of the flavour of the month being uh, almond croissant blondie. Um, so it would be basically um, blondie with a layer of almond paste in the middle, more blondie, so it's like, you know, it's stacked, and then it has almonds on top. What do you think? It is bloody delicious. So I think I want to start out with six flavours because then we will do a... What do you think? Do we think... Because I'm doing a, a pack of... A box of six. So you can have three, you can have six, or you can have a whole slab of one flavor. Do you find that you would be disappointed if there was eight flavors and you could only choose six? Or do you think better to have more flavors? Like better to have more choice? Because maybe you order 12 because you want to try all the flavours and you want double ups. I think, I think tr I, I'm going to want to add more flavours and I'm going to go overboard. But I think we should start with, do you think five with a, with a, a seasonal flavour? Six is good, eight sounds nice, but spoilage might be an issue for the slower movers, yeah. <clears throat> Everyone has a favorite and they might mine too. Okay, so out of these flavors, we, you're going to, I'm going to put a poll in chat, might be, uh, it's, it's, I don't know how we can do this because I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 options here. <laughs> how is, okay, we're going to have a, Caramel, Biscoff, Caramel, Coconut, and Rocky Road. Let's vote from those four. Caramel, Biscoff, Caramel, Coconut, and Rocky Road. They can be your flavour of the month options, yeah. What would you choose to put on the, the standard menu? Caramel, Biscoff, Caramel, Coconut, Rocky Road. You get one vote. Caramel, plain caramel. Um, Biscoff, caramel coconut, and Rocky Road. Oh, they, that's, no, they're, uh, they're, they're mail order. So, yeah, so they're shipped domestically throughout Australia to start with. Plain caramel. Caramel, caramel, caramel. You choose caramel over Rocky Road. Okay. I think I, I think caramel definitely good. Okay. Honey Joy, mint slice, Mexican or walnut. I don't have my Uggies on today. I have my. Calzuros. So you get to choose between rock, uh, honey joy, which is um, honey 
cornflake, which is my favorite. Um, a honey joy, mint slice, Mexican hot chocolate, or walnut. What would you like on a brownie? What are you choosing? Stay says walnut, Margo says mint slice. Hot mint slice from Mr. B. What about for you, Nito? Mexican from me. I like <sighs> I think Mexican might be a good seasonal option. Okay. I like honey joy, but I think it's a good seasonal variety. So let's go mint slice. So that is one, two, three, four, five. So we need one more. Nutella, peanut butter, iced coffee, or you get one more choice from something else I've said. So Nutella, peanut butter, oh, pistachio. So Nutella, peanut butter, iced coffee, or pistachio? Nutella, peanut butter, iced coffee, pistachio. There, you gotta choose out of those four. Peanut butter. Peanut butter would be great, peanut butter. What about peanut butter? So instead of plain peanut butter, what about peanut butter cheesecake? So you get like the cream cheese. Does that do it for you? Peanut butter, not as big as the US, no way. Oh my God, this is so good. So much of it. That sounds good, peanut butter cheesecake. And then we got to think about toppings. A young boy and father to the city. Okay, so into this, I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of cream. They both sound great, but one sounds like a lot more work. Peanut butter versus peanut butter cheesecake. Oh, what were the last round of options? I was distracted. How did you get distracted? The Nutella, peanut butter cheesecake, iced coffee or pistachio. Tell it yours are too good. Nutella. Nutella cheesecake option seems like more work. The, it isn't too much more work. But I don't want to do basic bitch brownies. I want to do nice gourmet brownies that you're going to really love. Hey, Aresh, Aresh, if you had a brownie flavor option. You can choose between Nutella, peanut butter cheesecake, iced coffee or pistachio. What would you choose? Basic bitch brownies. Yeah, like basic boring brownies. You know what I mean? Iced coffee. So like other people on the market are, are going to do Biscoff, right? We're not gonna do Biscoff straight away. Um, we want a traditional, we got a blondie, 
We've got um, caramel, mint slice, no boring bitch brownies. I think that's what our, do you think our slogan, that could be our slogan, no boring bitch brownies? What do you think? If there was a PB and J option, I'd choose that, but it could be a FOT flavor of the month. I feel like six is enough. Because I don't want to complicate it, but I also want choice. Putting some cheese in there. Six is a good number. I'm having the option to do a full pack of plain maybe. Yeah, yep. So you get, you can, the options will be th choose three, um, choose six, or a whole slab. I can always add more later, this is true. But I wanna make sure that they're good flavors. Like that they're, they're what people wanna buy. Rather than like, oh, I don't want any flavors, I'm just gonna order three. I'm like, I want you to order six. Combine coffee and peanut butter, make them dark chocolate. Coffee and peanut butter together. You, you're giving me, you're the second person that's given me a combination of peanut butter today. We had to try um, uh, apple butter and peanut butter before. I'm more likely to re-rub it monthly if there's a flavor of the month flavor I like too. Yeah. And there's a possibility for a subscription box as well. So you'll get, do you think the subscription box should be all the flavors or a subscription of like a box of the, the beat me to it. So um, I thought subscription would be a box of all of the flavors, which was, you know, the five main flavors with the addition of the new one, or it would be, or it would be, um, you could sign, like, you could log in and choose your specific flavors, what you want that month. And if you don't, then you just get given the six. Five regular flavors and then the flavor of the month. But if you want to log in and say, okay, I, I like with my flavor this month in the portal, maybe we create a portal, then you'd be like, I want two of this, two of that, and two of the new flavor. Or we could do a subscription box of all new flavors, one month. Everyone who signs up to that gets six new flavors. What about a love you box or a congratulations? Oh baby, Stace. We've got customizations planned. We dreaming big, but we don't know how to get there yet. I wanna be able to put like some type of etching or photo printing or You know how you have the coffee when the coffee goes in and they, they like print a picture on the coffee? Like, like I want, I want to do something like that, but with the brownies. What makes subscription box systems work is the ability to know what everyone wants before you start baking. Ideally, you make one only ship out once or twice per week. Got to keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't want it to be complicated for the subscription box. So I thought maybe the subscription box, like you pay for three months or six months or whatever. And you get a mix with the flavor of the month. We have to talk, like we have to discuss in as ideas. Um, 
It was so much fun overwhelming Molly. That we had a lot of so Tuesdays and Thursdays are dedicated office streams to discussing the business. Yesterday we were talking about over, overarching everything. Next stream we'll be talking about packaging specifically. Then we're going to go into flavors. Yeah, streaming back five days a week. Um, the faster we get onto this, the faster we will. Um, um, the faster we get onto this, the faster we'll start. So I need. I'm getting onto shipping today. Um, the other idea is. There's just so much. There's just so much to do. And, like, it's me and you guys. Like, Exceed as well, obviously. But I'm just trying to... It's so good. My goodness. Let's get some... Get some bread. Exceed. Troy, do you want some soup? Please. No? Okay. I'm trying to keep streaming because I'm waiting for the delivery, but it's not coming. Are you intending to lock down your five staple flavors today? Well, <sighs> I don't know because Say, for instance, let's just say, okay, because there's a few different people out there, so I'm trying to borrow different things from seeing what other people are doing and what we could do. So if you get the flav base flavors, like mint slice will come with mint slice toppings. Caramel, almond, like almond croissant will come with almond croissant toppings. But the traditional blondie and caramel, do you think people could choose the toppings that go on them? like sprinkles or like bits of Oreo or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, could that be an addition? Whereas like the traditional brownie will be like that. And then we would do like, to make it look nice, you would add chocolate on top or something. And then people could add sprinkles or they could add Twix. Could offer those. Offer those if people want it. So the idea of what we've got so far, it seemed like Nutella. We've we got to vote between Nutella and peanut butter cheesecake. Peanut butter could have... Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, my God. My peanut brittle is pretty pretty popular in my family. So we could do a peanut brittle brownie, which would be a peanut butter brownie with peanut brittle on top. What do we think? Peanut brittle sounds good. Okay. So we've got a traditional brownie, a blondie, caramel, mint slice, peanut butter. That's the five. And the flavor of the month, almond croissant to start. I feel like that's a bit popular at the moment. Or pistachio. What do you think? The flavor of the month being almond croissant or pistachio. Which would you prefer? I need you to a poll. Pistachio versus almond croissant. <clears throat> ¿Por qué no los dos? Roselli? No. We only can have six flavors. We're, we decided we're only doing six. So two votes for almond croissant, one vote for pistachio. Almond, three votes for almond, one vote for pistachio. I personally like almond croissant. I think it's bloody banging. And it's another alternative to a blondie because you got the plain blondie. <coughs> Almond. Almond. Okay. So it looks like almond. Almond's winning. Okay. So the flavors, the six flavors, 
look like they're going to be traditional blondie, almond croissant, caramel, mint slice, peanut brittle. Yeah? And then your other flavours of the munch could be Mexican hot chocolate, Nutella, iced coffee, pistachio, honey joy, like heaps of options to add in. Yeah? And see what's selling, see what's not selling. And so the blondie will be blonde, white chocolate blondie, okay? So then you have a blonde, white chocolate blondie, and then you have a traditional white chocolate, a traditional chocolate with have milk and dark chocolate in it. So it's no boring, no boring bitch brownies around here. And you've got almond croissant, which is topped with almonds, caramel, which is topped with like Rollo. What do you want to top the, the caramel one with? Um, mint slice and peanut brittle. Could you market research and tweet out some polls? This is a good idea. That's a good idea. Would you be able to help me word that and figure that out? <clears throat> oh, guys, I'm so nervous, scared. And then we got Rice Krispies. Okay. We've got no small bowls. Where's all my bowls gone? So high. So, would you be happy if you got a mixed box of six with those flavours? Oh, wrong, wrong thing. <clears throat> And then I have, how many croutons? There's some chunks of chorizo. What do you think? It would be heaven to get a box of treats review. Um, but have to keep the mint away from others as it usually overpowers with the smell, okay. Valid point. Crusty bread. I'm gonna sit like that. What do you think? It's my lunch. Mmm. You need some pepper. Weird looking brownies. Do you think it's necessary to have... What I thought, okay, the only addition what I would do to have a seventh brownie would be a gluten-free brownie. Because then the gluten-free people can like do six of gluten-free and just, um, just do different toppings. Mm, but... Like, what do you think about gluten-free brownie? Because I would just try, I want to test my recipe using almond flour to make my brownie 
and be more if you're angry, make it more dense, less dense. What do you think the importance of serving a gluten-free brownie is? <clears throat> you might have to do, we'll do gluten-free brownies, but it may take a few extra days to ship until I get enough orders to use a set. Well, maybe I say that gluten-free brownies can only be ordered in the slab because then I can make one batch per slab, like the, the, the brownie. That makes sense? Yeah, that's a good idea, Kerry. So you, or you can order gluten-free, but you have to order in a slab because they are more expensive to make and I don't want to waste ingredients. That's very true. Definitely while we're testing the waters because they might be popular. But until we have that consistency of orders, I don't want to be ordering heaps of almond flour and then it going to waste. Mm. Great. So, Separate box in a slab. Yeah. Um, fabulous. So I've got some work to do. I've got a recipe test. I wish that there was some of you guys in Perth um, so that I could, like, get you to taste, make them and taste here. Um, <clears throat> so peanut brittle sounds fun. I love making peanut brittle and it's easy to keep, like, if I make a batch of it, you just smash it up. You can keep it in a container. <coughs> Would it be peanut peanut butter brid, a peanut brittle and chocolate? Like you drizzle chocolate over it as well, and peanut butter brownie, mint slice. I am a bit worried now. Oh, I think a lot of people do like mint. Do you think more people like mint compared to Biscoff? I feel like Biscoff is like being overdone, but it's very popular. And same with Nutella. Like I'm worried about not having those two available. And also like a nut, like a, a walnut, a walnut one. Oh my God. I prefer mint. I think they're all very popular. Okay. All right. This has been very educational. Um, I'm going to make it anyway. Do, so do you guys, you want to make a, um, a brownie now, a gluten-free brownie and trial? Shall we make some a batch of gluten-free brownies? Do it. Do you want to do a poll for the flavors? How many can you do fit in a poll? And then there's like cherry, like, you know how I was talking about coconut? Like, do we do cherry, like a, a cherry ripe? Or there's just so many flavors out there. Or maybe for the first, maybe for the first few months, we do the traditional and the blondie. And they're, they're the two main ones. And then um, the rest of the other four, they rotate for the first six months to see what's popular. <clears throat> Amazing. You realize what it's like living in Australia? It's gonna be three months. Suck it.
Vai, eu sei, ó. Ah, ah, ah. Vai, eu sei. Xuxu, xuxu. Xux. Hum. Morning. Thank you very much. No worries. Have a great day. <coughs> ok. They're here. All right. This is how it arrives. Wow, look at that box. Okay, can you get me my phone? Uh, you gotta scratch out the... Yeah, I will, of course. Okay, they're here. Are we ready? This is the competitor's brownies. We're gonna be polite, guys. Uh, no, I'm just gonna take it off. You can't take it off. No, don't you wanna show them this? Yeah, but I wanna show them. You can't take it off. Yes. You can't take it off. Oh my God, can you just take it off? Just give me the text. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do feel like you might need to lock in your core flavors, otherwise you just keep looking like and getting overwhelmed. Yeah, that's true. Molly locking something in. What did you just say? Molly locking something in. Okay, so this is a box covered with a, oh, it's very well taped, holy shit. Yeah, and you were gonna rip it off. So, like 1.3 kilos. Yeah, okay, so. Oh, how much was it charged at? What do you mean? It doesn't tell you. Okay. All right, so physical weight is 1.3 kilos. You want to go show the people? Yep. Clam chowder. Exceed, do you want to try this? What is it? It's very yummy. Um, what do you mean? Not really, no. It's cauliflower soup. You know I'm not a soup guy. And you said you were making pumpkin soup. Yeah. You said my pumpkin soup was amazing. Just try it, please. Yeah, so why did you make cauliflower soup? Because you want to do something different. So he eats a brownie instead. I'm not a soup guy. Oh, wow, but after tasting that, I'm a soup guy. Oh my God. Told ya, I'll turn ya. I turn men and women. Okay. All right, are you ready? So this is how it arrived. I like the cutest sticker. <clears throat> this is cute. <coughs> what do you think? So it's in a, uh, it's been very well taped. Um, so it's in a mailer, like a, a plastic bag. It's rodent proof. Proof. So cubic weight is 600 grams, but it was 1.3 kilograms. All right? Liquid proof. Oh, I think it's double. It's double. God, it's like past the parcel. It is a double wrapped. Damn. It's not triple wrapped, is it? Oh my god. God damn it. How many times? Like, this has got so much packaging. No, I think it's just double. Yeah, it's just double. All right. I, I need scissors. Packaging box is really lovely. All right. Overall, the box is beautiful. Really nicely presented. That's cute. We're gonna think about what we can do, guys. 
I put a sticker there, I think, but very like plain packaging. Oh, it's a bit dirty. That's all right. It feels nice. So it's matte, thick quality, like it's sturdy. I like <sighs> nice QR code. I like this. I it. I'm being picky, but like it's got like crumbs on it. Like the inside is like, it's a bit, this is the competitor. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> it's cute. So it says at the bottom, uh, for superior brownie experience, microwave for 10 to 12, 15 seconds, refrigerate brownies in air cut tie container for up to 10 days. Environmentally friendly packaging. It's how do you? It. Um, cardboard, but it does. It depends on the ink. I was reading yesterday. It's dependent on. Um, like this doesn't say that it's recyclable. Um, which I'll ask if ours are, because they need to be not coated with a certain ink chemical, which is quite interesting. All right. So this is what I was explaining to you guys yesterday. This stuff, this, there's this pink, you, it's typically brown. That's pretty good. Arrived pretty well. Okay, so the flavors that I bought were the plain blondie. Let me see. So nice little, this sticker, um, it's upside down, but looks very cute. Just, this is just um, crepe proof paper. It's not grease proof. Look at that. So these are four brownies. Look at that, they're huge. They look really good. Nice presentation. The double plastic wasn't good either. What do you think? So this is um, the Blondie Cherry Ripe. Um, then this one is chocolate. Uh, hold on. I, I don't want. I don't think my brown ours will probably be like a bit smaller, and you'll get an order of three or six in a box this size. What do you think? Do you think this is too big? So this was the Tease Me Brownie, which is mm, chocoholic in your life. It is a, a regular um, chocolate brownie with Tim Tams Maltesers just on top with chocolate. Um, then you have the OG Blondie, which is <clears throat> um, Fierce Babe is dense, gooey, and oozy with the flavors of vanilla, caramel, and ultimate treat. Um, then you've got the Cherry Ripe, which is a delicious, oh, hold on, a blondie chunk infused with Cherry Ripe flavor. I don't know how they do that. So it's a, it's a blondie with extra color and flavor. So they just use the batter and just add a different color and flavor. And then it's topped with chocolate and then chocked up pieces of um, cherry ripe, so coconut chocolate, buzz. Then this one here is their nutty crunch bar, which is um, milk chocolate, peanuts, and cornflakes. Yeah, so that's what our, that's what our idea is that to have them in those little um, inserts so they can't move around. Definitely, I can't really tell the size with the box. Okay, so they're quite big. So they're, I think they're eight by eight centimeters. Um, a pen, pen for scale. They're quite big. They are big, yeah. Super 
So what do you think of like this size? So they were $8 each. That was eight. Eight, eight. So all three, eight and then seven. So all together with shipping, it cost me $45.95. So it's $31 for four and then $15 shipping. They were supposed to take two days shipping. It took three. I, did, I ordered these on Tuesday morning and they arrived today. I think inserts would be good to keep flavors separate too. So for those that were playing along at home, this is the idea of what we would do. Ours would be bigger, but see how there's, um, there's eight there. Ours would be three or six. What do you think? Because I think, I think these are like too big. What do you think? But let's try them. <coughs> um, I've got a chopping board here. They look really good. I'm very excited. I think $8 for its size is good value. Yeah. Harvey's of each flavor. Yep. All right, let's go the blondie first. But the, the only issue is that I have is there's only $1 difference between this and this. And these are, it's a bit simple compared to like that looks way more. But I don't, I would make this a bit bigger, I think. All right. Thing. Um, this is just a blondie, so this is kind of like oh, a bl brownie but without chocolate. It's like probably milk chocolate. It smells good. Mm. It's like caramelly, not too sweet. These are really good. Really nice texture. I would like it with like chunks in it though. I'm not, uh, I like pieces in my brownies. Um, but it's really good. And I love that it's not too sweet. The outside is like crunchy and the soft, like fudgy center. Hi. Okay. Good. All right, let's try. The difference between these two is this is meant to be the same blondie but have cherry flavors inside it. Okay. I don't know if it's got, I wanna try. I don't know if it's got coconut in it. Looks like it does. I'm thinking there's maybe a bit of fruitiness. I think it's just fruit, food coloring, honestly. It doesn't taste any difference. I think it's just food coloring to make it pink. But let's just try with the chocolate on top. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the topping adds the flavour, but it's yum. It's so sweet, like I can't eat. I don't think I could eat much more. Very dense. It's the same with this. It's very dense. Mm. I'm just trying to get like <clears throat> the type of chocolate, like the quality of chocolate they're using. Like if it's um, like Cadbury or Oh, oh, that doesn't taste very good. Like um, the the topping is ca uh, um, the topping. I don't know. I want someone here with me to like back me up. The topping is cherry ripe. The dark chocolate they've melted on top doesn't taste like. Like Cadbury chocolate or, or like quality chocolate. It's like very sweet. Um, kind of like a like a fake. Ch I don't know. This blondie is really good. Okay. Let's go next one. I don't know. <clears throat> This one looks good. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like that, they, they like kind of like crumbs and things. I think that's just what's going to happen. They're going to get rattled around. I'm not huge. I don't think it's a huge issue. Okay, so this one is a regular brownie with Maltesers, Tim Tams on top. <coughs> okay. Oh. Nice. Look at that. You can tell that they use good quality, like nice dark cocoa. It's so fudgy. Like, The outside's really crisp, like a meringue. It's very dense inside. Mm. Way more dense than mine. Hi. These are two weeks old now. This is two weeks old, so don't, don't compare it completely. Like this is my Biscoff one. And mine's got the more air in it. Still fudgy, but not like that. Holy dooly. Hold. Hey, I like that. I'm like, okay. What do we think? Oh my God, I'm so, so dense. It's like mushing rather than pulling apart. The flavor's nice. I think people would really like these. Mm, again, 
Like this chocolate isn't like eating chocolate. It tastes like, I don't know what it is, but it's, but I think that is the worst bit that lets it down, this chocolate coating. It's like, <clears throat> it doesn't, it's like really cheap, um, like cooking chocolate, I don't know. It's like very sweet and it tastes like, like red tulip, but like worse, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. Maybe because it's easier like to temper, I don't know, or if it's a, a, um, a product that they've bought. Okay, this one, cornflake and chocolate. Look how good that looks. So it's got peanuts in the underside, supposedly. Aldi chocolate, I made Mars bars slice and didn't have Cadbury on the top, so use Aldi, never again. But Aldi have some really good chocolate. Like that chocolate that I bought the other day, the Chocow or something. Um, okay, so for me personally, like this crust, is really dry. It's crunchy, but it's like drying out. So it like, it just crumbles. Chucka. Oh, the peanuts are good. I'm young, I, I'm so sweet. Mm, the brownies themselves are the best part. Like the brownies are really good. The blondie is still my favorite, less sweet. But the flavors come on on the top but I'm just trying to think of what I would do different Not, um, for us. Like, <clears throat> I like the flavors on top, but I, I would prefer like flavors. Like it, it's, you don't get much of the flavor coming through from the peanut and the, and the stuff on top. Cause it's, it's like, I don't know how to explain that, but dry, like, it, it, it dries out and it has less flavor. This is from an Australian company called Charlie Brownie. Um, the brownies though, themselves are really good. I don't know if we should make ours more dense. Do you guys like dense? Brownies like this. I like the packaging, the box. I think for me, I would rather get six flavors than four and make them smaller. So you can use three flavors, six flavors, or you can get a whole slab of like a whole big box of one flavor or different, like one brownie with like different toppings and stuff. And you can get it customized with like messages. I'm a bit nervous. I prefer less dense becomes to brownie. Be less dense would dry out quicker. Yeah. If it's more cakey, it would dry out quicker. Yeah. But I think mine are, mine are two, that's two and a half weeks. And I still... Tastes really good. Mm. I need milk. So 
So, would you prefer four brownies like this or six smaller size? I'd love to know what you think, what your thoughts of looking at these. Like Molly, don't worry about the brownie business. They're rocking it. Don't do it. Um, I'm just thinking about shipping times. Mm. Six smaller, more variety. Sauce pot indie, thank you. Your packaging looked awesome too. The idea. So I uh, say, for instance, like my idea for a one brownie would be like that size. Maybe even that. It's quite a big size. Like that's two. Yeah, like that. Maybe just a bit smaller. That'd be rectangle. But that's that's a big brownie for like. Five dollars fifty, six dollars. We'll see. Most important question when it comes to memem brownies: Will they all be edge pieces? Um. So, like these are all. All have one edge. No, that doesn't look like it's got an edge. That's an edge piece. These are none of these are edge pieces. None of those are edge pieces. So um, I had the idea of that you could opt, if it was a possibility, if I could make it happen, you could say I would want an edge piece or I'd want a middle if the option is available. I said take into account the weight shipping, see how those different quantities will affect cost. As a startup, you, don't have the you won't have the negotiated discounts on bigger companies. Have. Yeah, definitely. Um, I already have, from where we ship merch, I already have a small discount. Um, but the more you send, send, the more you get a discount, um, for sure. Um, yeah, because it comes down to weight is a big thing. If you were to use Australia Post packaging, so like if I got this and then put it in Australia Post parcel, you get a discount and it doesn't matter your weight. Um... But it, it, uh, I think with $15 for express shipping, you get up to five kilos for this size. I've got to figure it out. But it's definitely the cost of shipping is everything will be express. There's no qualms about it. There's no, like, it has to be express. It's a perishable. I want it to get one to two days shipping. <laughs> um, but yeah. So would you say this was $35 for a box? Would you pay that for four brownies? No, what was it? $45, including shipping. So ours would probably be a little bit smaller and cheap, but you have more variety. They might be a bit more expensive though, but you'll get more flavors. Only for special occasions. Or, so then there's the possibility that you can get three brownies for say, was that 16, 24, Hold on. $39 shipped. It could be corporate gifts, yeah. That's how I have an idea of corporate gifts and... 
Cozy lives is real. Cozy. Cos, cos, cozy. Um, so 21 plus 15. So we're looking at like $36 ship cost of living crisis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. So you could get three brownies delivered for 36 or six, six brownies for 57. I wouldn't buy from that customer after seeing them. Tell me why. I would love to hear why. Why you, if you would get these, if you lived in Australia, if you could, if you, okay, if money wasn't an issue, would you buy from here? Why not? What, like, what's going through your head? I'd love to know. Market research. This is a good thing. So when they were packed, this box is beautiful. But I don't want to, like, I want to do something sim similar, but I don't want to do the same thing as these guys. Like, I want it to be unique. I look like, that, that didn't move. That was fantastic. Like, great packaging. Have to head out. No worries. I'm, like, oh, after... I was probably because I've eaten sweet stuff this morning already, but, like, they are so sweet. The brownies look too dense for me. They look dry on the outside. Uh, if they melted, chocolate didn't taste that good. Yeah, that's not appealing. I understand. Thank you. The packaging is very nice. That cherry one looked nice. It looked like it tastes artificial. Yeah. The sauce, the sauce wasn't the best part. The chopped up um, cherry candy on top wasn't a, a, a cherry ripe, which is a like a you would call it kind of like a, an almond joy, but like cherry flavored. Is it possible to do shipping from the US like with the books? Have the freezing refrigeration tests not worked well? I haven't tested. So if anyone, I, 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 if you would like to pay shipping, um, I will ship you a box of brownies, but I cannot promise how they will come. I like, like I said, these have been in the, like, these ones here had been at room temperature for two and a half weeks. They've been open as well, but like this, take that off. But this brownie is, is two and a half weeks old and still tastes pretty good. So I think they can come to the US. And these are good, you can put them in the microwave because the choc mine have chunks of chocolate inside. Um, mm. I think they're delicious. But if anyone would like to try shipping to the US, I can make you a batch. Um, I'm working on that for Chef Steve. What is he, what is he doing, Luminology? International shipping, you have to worry about all kinds of different food laws. True. True. Um, I can send it as, as a gift. But yeah. Um, if, uh, but the thing is, I'd want to test, so I'd send it to you, like, Dex as a gift. And then we could test it first if it gets there. And if it gets there, then I would look into what regulations and things that I'd need to achieve. I have, uh, I have to get public liability insurance, $10 million. One of my um, medical uh, engineers packaging for medical industry, think blood organs, etc. So the owner is helping me figure out the right kind of packaging to keep foods at the proper temp for a longer time. Oh wow! So what is he trying? To, what is he selling, Chef Steve? That's exciting. It wasn't a fan of the hi babe, um, or thank you babe. I think something a little classier. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a type of person like that. Um, I don't like. Some people are very much like that, and I think that that 
demographic that that per like um, I don't want to my ideal client isn't you know a man isn't a girl right it's it's someone that wants to celebrate someone else like buying it for someone else for their gift instead of ch like flowers um, it's someone who wants to treat themselves, has something, like you can keep the fr them in the freezer, someone that likes good quality. That, that's for me is one of the important things. Is our, our, our ideal client is someone who values quality. Like the, the type of chocolate we're gonna be using is more expensive. And we, we looked at using Tony Chocolate Only. We're trying to find a trade version, but it doesn't seem that there is. Like we would love to have um, like a, ethical chocolate like that would be amazing but um unfortunately it's very hard to find um at this stage in bulk like with the quantity that we're making so maybe eventually we'll make that change um but that would be cool to be like um <clears throat> um that would be cool to use tony's but one one um, bar of Tony's, which uh, one batch of brownies uses one bar and it's seven dollars. Um, um, the babe language rem business reminds me of MLM girlies. Yeah, Chef Steve is an amazing is an amazing community. Many supporters who pay big dollars to order his food. We want to figure out who pays out ways for him to stay busy, especially on those slow food truck days, helping his company grow. Amazing. Fantastic. I love that. Logistics is a bitch, yeah. Um, well, thank you, Stace. Thank you for the, the feedback about the babe and the, the brownies and the, you know, the packaging and things like that. I appreciate that. Anyone else who has any opinions or ideas? Um, again, like there is, it's not, I don't want to look at it from a scarcity mentality that it's a, competition it's what are out what else is it out there on the market and i'm rooting for them i hope they do really well but i want to do something different i want to see what's out there i am being critical because i want to figure out like what i like and what how i want to do things differently but i think the product is really great um i just want to figure out what how we can do our business giving the best quality and how we can be different from those around and be better in our own way in our own own um in our own lane, keep in our own lane. Like I have I, really big um, ideas for customization, but I'm just trying to figure out how we can make it work. Like I would love for you to get like, um, be able to send in a photo and then we make it like a sketch drawing or something. And then you get that laser inked onto like a rice paper sheet or something. And that goes on your brownie and for your dad or your friends or like, Nita was saying before, like the nice tits blonde brownie. You could have like a little picture of something. I don't know, like not tits obviously, but um, uh, something come up that is symbolic to you and your friend or like an in-joke. I would love to be able to um, be involved with that and celebrate with people. I think like a celebration store would be amazing. But we're going to work out packaging first. We got our flavors to start. So I have to start recipe testing them. The almond croissant, the caramel, the mint slice, and the peanut brittle. I have to now price them up, figure out sizing, and pee my pants. All market research, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay. Alrighty. All right, okay. Um, I hope my pee my pants is not one of the flavors. Maybe it'll be pecan, pee my pants. Okay. But I just wanna find a way that we can get my food into people's hands. It, uh, there's people doing it already. And there's always going to be doing people doing something similar. 
of any business you go into, but I want to be able to do it differently. I want to do it really well and I want to do it with you guys if you want to be involved. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, okay. Mm-mm-mm-mm. All right. Let's jump over to who really want to go? Okay. We're going to go and see Mylon. He's playing um, Elden Ring. We're going to jump over there and see him. Um, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Um, we're going to be making Bao on Monday and chili jam okay so uh i'm gonna teach you how to make chili jam and the raspberry jalapeno one sounded interesting sounded interesting but we might make bow from scratch and then if we've got if they screw up we've got some in the freezer um two days 19 hours and 57 minutes thank you contributed to the stream mouse resub for 64 months annie resub for five months appreciate you guys um, we are under $300 away from the community goal. So that is something that we might be able to achieve soon in the next few weeks. Um, 1,102 uh, out of 1,408 towards uh, the pizza goal, pizza oven, and the red Dead by Dead Lights, Dead by Daylight stream, the crap. Um, but thank you everyone for being here and oh, Stace, can you screenshot that and send me some information? Um, thank you everyone for being here. Take care, brush your hair, be good to yourself and those around you. Copy and paste this.